This is a school of the spirit. It says, and now it does not yet appear what we shall be like. mighty men we may be weak right now but Lord from among us raise mighty people people who are absolutely unlimited hallelujah 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 brothers and sisters God is making you mighty people. It's not a prophecy. You are enduring the process. The Bible says, He that endures to the end will be given a crown and a white stone. It's not who, he who desires the crown. He that endures. It's a curriculum. It's a training. It will cost you. But if you decide to allow your flesh suffer momentarily, for the sake and the excellency of what is ahead of you the bible says that jesus who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despising the shame i want you to know that you are not wasting your time hallelujah praise the lord please greet one another and be seated it's good to see everyone again It's always our joy and pleasure to gather like this. Where's my sweetheart? She celebrated her birthday. Come, let me give you a big kiss. Come on. I told you, you can kiss children and old women. If you are truly born again. We're going to sing happy birthday to her. How many years? Five. <laughs> Some of you, when you were five years, you were not even talking. They thought something was wrong with you. Later, he started saying, Baba, at age seven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you ready? I'm singing a birthday song. are done we're going to sing you must sing are you ready now sing happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday to how old are you now May your children be as intelligent as this. Hallelujah. We pray for her in the name of Jesus. She will be a great and mighty woman of God. In the blessed name of Jesus Christ, I pray. It's between me and her, none of your business. Bless her. Appreciate her. Hallelujah. She told me something. It's none of your business. Praise God. It's good to see everyone. Hallelujah. Matthew 5. Please bring out your writing materials. Let's explore the word of God.
is calling us deeper, 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 deeper. It's calling us deeper, deeper, deeper. Calling me deeper, 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 deeper. It's calling me deeper, deeper, deeper. Hallelujah. Koinonia is not the name of a program. Please listen. The word koinonia is, is the name given to the experience that God delivers unto us here. We found different ways to express this and the best theme that God gave us was koinonia. So don't get used to Koinonia being the name of a program. I'm coming for Koinonia as a program. I need you to know that Koinonia is an experience. This is why every time we talk about Koinonia, we tell you experience. Experience it. It's a real solid experience. When you experience Koinonia, you do not need to tell people. They will know that you met the Lord and you are walking with him. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Koinonia means intimacy and partnership with the Holy Spirit. And I told us how that it is important to understand these things are complementary but they are not the same. Hallelujah. Our goal in this place is to bring people to a place of intimacy with the Holy Spirit to help us understand the structure and the operation of the kingdom of heaven. Jesus left only one message with the body of Christ. The gospel of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The entire Bible from Genesis to Revelation is an attempt to convey the story and the message of a kingdom. And no matter what we become, if we do not understand the system of God's kingdom and how it operates, my passion in life aside from helping men experience the reality of the Holy Spirit, is to bring them into a comprehension of the structure, the operation, and the principles of the kingdom. This is what we do week in, week out. Hallelujah. There is a culture we are initiating you into. There is a way of life. There is a pattern. There is an understanding. There is a mindset that you are receiving and our success as far as this prophetic assignment is concerned for this season is only realized if you are actually becoming what we are praying and laboring that you become is that true hallelujah for as long as we have crowds and people keep clapping people keep falling down getting up getting messages traveling around and the messages keep spreading that is great but are you being changed are you becoming this this epistle that we are trying to carve and chisel praise the lord i told you that this is a school there is a long curriculum of the spirit and week in week out we keep examining different aspects of the kingdom so that we can come into a comprehension it's not just for you to have rema and say oh every time you stand give me this mountain there's a message like that no no or commanding result or any of these great messages you love the goal is that you become an expression of this thing hallelujah such that wherever you go you become an envoy Hallelujah. Grace is granted unto you to begin to reproduce the things that you have learned. 
Acts chapter 1 said, I write these things to you, O excellent Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and teach. Not just teach, do and teach. Hallelujah. I have spent my life helping the body of Christ to understand that the kingdom of God is not a religious organization. The kingdom of God is a system. Everybody says a system made up of a definite structure and when you understand the structure the operation and the patterns of the kingdom then you will be able to be a worthy ambassador god will now be able to empower you hallelujah praise the lord please get this i, I want you to i want to burn it into your spirit i want you to understand that this is what we are doing so that you can align yourself and you can have a reference from which to gauge your spiritual progress. Is that true? If you look at where in November right now, if you look at yourself from January till now, how many principles of the kingdom do you know and understand that you can apply consistently to deliver results? If all you have done is to attend the meetings very faithfully, but you have not come into a comprehension, a knowing a recognition and understanding of this thing that we seek to teach then our hearts are not fulfilled hallelujah it's very difficult for believers in the body of Christ to sit down and learn and understand the principles of the kingdom we prefer to receive we prefer pray for me lay hands on me cast the devil out of me do this and that you know prophesy breakthrough and do all of that and that is wonderful that's why we spend the last week of every month to minister to god's people because it's part of what we are anointed for but i needed to understand that our pride and our satisfaction is not that you honor the meetings every friday so that we do not come and preach to empty chairs but that you are being transformed you are being transformed in a way that we are seeing. Hallelujah. That's why every time I have the opportunity to bless my sweetheart, the dear lady, I love her so much because I have seen as little as this lady is. This lady has had encounters with Jesus. She has had encounters with different kinds of people. As little as this girl is. She would be in the midst of people who are maybe playing some ungodly songs and she will confront them and say, Jesus doesn't like this. This is, this is a mindset. Are you getting my point? So, there is a training. And because her mind is innocent, she's not received any junk from the past. So, the work of her own right now is not renewing the mind. Her own is building and transformation. Are you getting me? There's, there's nothing that has corrupted and, and spoiled the spiritual genes of her mind. So it's easy for the Holy Spirit to be able to walk. This lady will grow with this ideology. Are you getting me now? And when she gets to certain levels, she will see how mighty God will use her. To her, she's just playing. She's a little girl. She's just a lady who is passionate about Jesus. She has come to know Jesus as a person she has come to honor the things of the Lord. There's one other little baby, a prayer band baby. Every time I have the opportunity to come and pray with the prayer band, when you come, very tiny girl, you just see great people praying and sweating and you see one very tiny girl also following them. Whenever people lift their hands, you watch what they are doing and lift her hands too. We call this a programming. It's a mindset. Hallelujah if she walks consistently under that atmosphere that mindset will become a stronghold in her and no devil will take it away are you getting my point a stronghold is not a demonic word stronghold is whatever has held your mind captive so that you become its victim and if that becomes the word of god and the operation of the kingdom then you will begin to reflect christ by default hallelujah are you understanding me now so as as we seek to teach it's important you understand that we are not just displaying new revelations or attempting to tell you to see the progress we are making spiritually no no 
we are trying to unveil, to open you up to the structure and the dimensions just like you come into a school system. You come naive and a lecturer keeps teaching you and building you. Is that true? Curriculum, course after course. A time can come when you can turn back and say, Kai, to an extent, I understand what I'm studying. How many of you, don't lift your hands, can turn back and say, after years and years of sitting under the word, I understand to an extent, to the level to which light has been opened unto me, I understand. There are many of us that have failed to, to discipline our spirits to come into a comprehension of this truth. And can I tell you something? When you stay in the presence of God, you never go back neutral. You go back broken or you go back hardened. One of these two must happen to you. Are you getting me? It becomes dangerous when you are used to the atmosphere of God's presence. Because you will have that form of religion. So every time they raise the structure, you know it. Is that true? Every time they are talking about giving, you say, ah, I can't even list the scripture. But the Bible says, ever learning, but never coming into the knowledge of the truth. And that becomes a dangerous thing. Have you seen people that every time you try to correct them, you can see somebody smoking. You try to talk to him and see how he will bombard you with scriptures. He will tell you, my reverend baptized me. Even me and my reverend, we drank the same beer. Blah, blah, blah. This and that happened. And he will try to justify it. Is that true? And he will tell you, the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And he believes that you are supposed to be convinced. An ideology. Hallelujah. We seek to transfer a mindset. Are you receiving that mindset? Is it becoming real in your life? Because the world will test your conviction about these things we are teaching you. Is that true? You will find people everywhere. This conviction will be tested in your relationship and marriage. This conviction will be tested in your academics. This conviction will be tested in your personal life. This conviction will be tested in your job, your business, your ministry, whatever endeavor. It's not enough just to know the word of God. You must submit to the authority of that word. He said, submit yourself under the mighty hand of God. It is only on that condition that you can resist the devil and he will flee. Please, are you learning something? So if after all of the teachings that we have been teaching and teaching and teaching, and let me use, let me use one lady, come. Hallelujah. If we have been teaching on the structure of the kingdom, look at me, and this lady carries herself alive and goes to chain herself, in a very bad and ungodly relationship what what does that tell you it tells you that this ideology has not become spirit and life to her is that true is that true are you following me now if this lady wants to get married right now if she has been listening to the truths that we have been teaching she will now use them as the template the platform that informs whatever decision she's making is that true do you understand so based on that now God can give us a thumbs up because we are not just doing religion. Somebody is receiving this truth, believing it enough to be convicted whether you are supervised or not. It has become your way of life. Hallelujah. So, a non-believer can come to my sister right now and say, see, let's go to a party. I have money. Is it not money you are looking for? And the lady can tell him, um, I appreciate your interest in me. But I need you to understand that I belong to a kingdom. And in that kingdom, we have values. Are you getting me? And it is not within the jurisdiction of that kingdom. Many of you are saying, I beg, Jare, they'll be social. Just go, will you die? This is what we are saying. You are not convinced enough. That's why you are ashamed of it. Anything you are ashamed of has not become a solid revelation to you. Is that true? So is this word becoming spirit and life? Have you been applying it? Did you apply it last week? Did it work for you? Hallelujah.
If somebody looks at my sister right now and says, you're a very stupid girl. And maybe three years ago, she would just remove her shoe while he's talking and use the heel of the shoe and wipe the guy's face and say, this is how stupid people behave. You see, that, that would have been the way she would behave. But right now, there is a value system. You are higher than this person in understanding. There is a fellowship you have come into that grants you access to behave like Jesus Christ. And based on that understanding, the truth is you are human, so you will be angry. But a scripture from the treasury of the deposits you have made in your spirit, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. That scripture now ministers to you at that point. And you can look at the person and just say, God bless you. And the person is wondering. Hallelujah. Or that you see another brother who is just broke and suffering. But you know this guy's destiny is going to change. It's just that it won't change immediately. The world is working. And they send some money for you. And you remember that the Bible says, Be good to all men especially to they that are of the household of faith and you have submitted to that word and based on that revelation without supervision you must not come and give a testimony and say i help this brother this is to let you know that i am making progress i'm applying what i'm being taught no not necessarily but that you can come to this brother and say my brother i decided to buy you one tier of rice one tier of beans, one tier of gari. Let it help you. I know the word of God is working. And by grace, I've been privileged to receive some supply and I'm helping you with it. Listen, brothers and sisters, if people see you and they do not see the difference between you and them, you are not a real Christian. And that difference is not tongues. That difference is not revelation. That difference is a culture. It's an, it's an atmosphere. Is a lifestyle. Is a walking. You have become so solid. When you joke, you joke the word. When you talk, you talk the word. Whatever it is, even when, no matter how boring you sound, you have no option. You are being reprogrammed. And you cannot undo it. This is what you must become. Some of you still use all kinds of bad languages. You have sat down here for over two years. You didn't delete them. You only created a folder for them. And when opportunity, because said in this Nigeria, you need these folders. When there is need, you dust it and bring it out and keep people where they belong. No. Hallelujah. There are many of you who do not read your Bibles and you have never tried to. There is nothing wrong when you have a spiritual predicament. The problem is if you do not even know it is a problem and you are doing it and you are not making any efforts about it. Hallelujah. So are you following what I'm saying? If after all of these meetings now and then this lady comes, she has two boyfriends somewhere. One is to supply to bring supply beginning of the month this one the middle of the month then the real one that she's going to marry that she uses their money to help and support and she says wisdom even god you see see look look at me listen listen please i'm not laughing listen let me tell you something if you truly want to be a christian be a christian are you getting my point if you think you're going to play pranks and tricks i want to tell you something the bible says do not be deceived is that in your bible it said god cannot be mocked that means if if you don't receive the recompense of that mindset you have mocked god and the bible says god cannot be mocked praise the lord some of you have been giving bad advices to friends Every time there is a need to do something bad, you are the one they consult. Bible study, they don't consult you. Prayer, they don't consult you. Should we go for night vigil or not? They don't even meet you. But when there is trouble and you want to corner something, they say, go and meet this person. They will arrange everything for you. There are some of you, you are like that. The way they look at you, you just look like a crook. When they want to do anything shady, they just say, oh yeah, come. Tell that guy he's five. You say, oh yeah, I know how to do it. See, you must, you must change 
and let people, the Bible says, let your light so shine, not before angels, before men, that they may see. The Bible wants men to see. So are you being changed? Is your mindset being changed? There are some of you that are nursing a lot of unforgiveness and bitterness against your loved ones. In spite of the teaching, we have shouted teaching on rapture, we taught on air time. What do you want us to say again to change your mind? Hallelujah. Some of you, even if we say Jesus Christ is coming tomorrow, you won't change. You say me. When, when Jesus comes, we will settle this issue. Whereas you know that that thing is just a cultural belief. When Jesus comes, he doesn't have time to waste on frivolities. You are going to hell or you are going to heaven. Full stop. Hallelujah. Are you being changed? That when they are doing malpractice somewhere, you know that you know how much you will do this malpractice and how it can help you. But you are constrained by your love for God. And you say, I'd rather fail honorably than do this malpractice. I know that there are many of us who are looking at me, you are just saying, just keep talking, finish sharing the grace, let's get out of here. I know what I will believe and I know what I will not believe. Hallelujah. So if the word of God is not changing you such that unbelievers can begin to testify that there is really something about your life. A guy just walks into your room, wants to sleep with you and says, I don't like it. What is the meaning of that? Oh, I don't do this. Oh, I'm not, I don't, I don't like things like this. You know, the, the way I am. See, I don't want to be pregnant. Is that the reason why you are afraid? Or there is more. Praise the Lord. You sit down and you watch a film, a pornographic film. You say, I'm an adult. Please, don't let, nobody should make me a child. And you finish watching that film and you cannot look at the ladies around you and go in peace. You are now praying, fasting, saying, oh God, help the time you would have been using, building in your spiritual life. You just scatter the foundation and you have to start again. Praise the Lord. There are some of us who are together and you see a lot of friends. They come with their car, whether they are father's car or whoever. And they say, ah, bros, are you going? They are calling you bros. And they are calling you to go and do something that is not of the kingdom. And the pressure is mounting on you. They are saying, hi, you now. Wow. And the thing is pinching you. They are saying, okay, but I will come. I won't drink. I won't smoke. Can't you say no? The Bible says the grace of God has appeared unto all men. Teaching us to say no. Are you convinced that this word can make you a leader and it can make you a great person? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If we are achieving this, then I know that we are making progress. But if we are not achieving this, then sincerely speaking, before men, ministry may be moving. But before God, there is little effect that is, is being created. Hallelujah. Let your conviction about spiritual things be strong. I love the lady that said they brought somebody that was dead or dying. And she laid, she laid hands on the person. Some of you will join in the shout, hey, hey, at least try. If you try and it doesn't work, no problem. But let it be that among the 12 people who were lamenting, you took a step and it didn't work, no problem. God will honor you for launching out to take that step. Some of you, when you want to pray, they tell you, please, oh, this is not the issue of prayer. Because you have not been doing it. When did you suddenly become a man of God? It has not been your lifestyle. You talk the way they talk. You do everything. Suddenly, you remember one koinonia message. You drank with them yesterday. Now you want to lay hands and they say, for what? I'd rather lay hands than you. We drank together. Be different. Be different. So different that you are noted for certain things about the kingdom. And when there is a need, 
to do certain things as far as the kingdom of God is concerned, you become the reference point. This is transformation. And this is what this teaching is all about. And then at that point, God will empower you to demonstrate the reality of that kingdom. You will manifest wisdom that is beyond the comprehension of men. God will bless you. Every time people see you, they know you are a leader. You must not have PAs and people following you. No, there is a culture. There is a way of behavior. They are sharing food. Somebody gets, somebody is very hungry. And you are not so hungry. And that's the last meal. And the Holy Spirit says, give the person and you are looking. I say, no, I'm not giving any. I came, I got my, you know, all these kinds of things. Bless you. While you're seated, you are going to pray in one minute and say, Lord, I don't want to waste my time. I truly want to see transformation in my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I do not just want to waste my time listening to Rema upon Rema, learning, learning all the cliches, learning all the powerful words, learning all the vocabularies, creating a form of religion without a sincere passion. There are many of us who attend at least three or four programs every week but the fruit of the transformation is not evident in our lives we still talk the way we used to talk we still behave the way we still behave there is nothing that shows that there is a culture of the kingdom working in us Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh, and Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, O let the ancient words in One more time. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. We have open heart oh let the ancient words be change me this is always my prayer koinonia is about change the symbol of koinonia in a man's life is change transformation 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 let there be change Hallelujah. I'm going to teach tonight briefly and then we'll pray. And voice of his presence. And voice of his presence. Praise the bread of life, Emmanuel, God with us, the one who saves.
Praise the cup of life, that glorious spring that washes our sins away. And voice of his presence. Matthew 5 Help us spirit of the living God He's the Holy Ghost Spirit of the living God You're the Holy Ghost Scepter of the King of Kings you're the Holy Ghost, seed of the age to come. Changing everything in obedience to us. Hallelujah. And voice of His presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All through scripture, we see that God's idea of the church or the believer has been to create an envoy that will communicate certain things that are in the mind of the spirit to the human race for every season. Hallelujah. An envoy is is the highest governmental representative it's a governmental representative that is sent on behalf of a government on a mission an assignment hallelujah if we need to send certain people one of our brothers is getting married tomorrow and we're sending a few people they are envoys. Hallelujah. Whatever we stand to represent is what we want to see them promote there. If we have a gift for the couple, what happens? We give them the gift and we trust them with that gift. Hallelujah. With an assignment to go and deliver that gift. Hallelujah. And there are certain people that God has anointed to be envoys of his presence carriers, distributors to infect territories with the presence of God the power, the culture of the kingdom hallelujah and tonight we are going to explore that understanding, say after me I am an envoy say it, I am an envoy a representative I'm an ambassador mean it from your heart say I am an envoy Hallelujah. Matthew 5. Jesus himself taught us this in chapter 5. From verse 13, he said, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, with what shall it be salted? He said, It is thereafter good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ready? 14. One to read. Ye are the light of the world. Stop. He said, I am sending you as an envoy into a system that is characterized by darkness darkness in scripture talks of confusion talks of death talks of sin whatever does not have the charisma of god in it is darkness and the bible says ye are the light it didn't say you have the light it said you are the light hallelujah you are a city that is set not like a city you are a city. You are being elevated upon a hill. He said you cannot be hidden. A Christian, a walking Christian, is not just one who has given his life to Jesus Christ. It's not just one who prays in tongues. It's not just one who is in ministry. It's not just one who avoids sin. Great. All of these things are great. It's not even just ones who have rema. No, a Christian is one who has taken the mandate of the kingdom 
as a personal responsibility he has come into the understanding that he's not just a son he's not just a servant he is an envoy he has come into a place of kingdom responsibility that not only have we received of god but we have been mandated to deliver something hallelujah envoys of his presence when jesus walked upon the earth the bible says we beheld his glory as of the one of the only begotten the bible says he was full of grace and truth and everywhere he went the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost is that true and with power and he went about doing what he was an envoy of the goodness of god because god was with him he carried the divine presence of god and he demonstrated the reality of that divine presence he had a culture the bible says every time he taught men were astonished they said what wisdom is this what authority is this we have not seen this in this fashion hallelujah when jesus walked to you and you were sick there will be a dramatic demonstration of the revelation of the kingdom he went to bethesda and saw a man who had lain there 38 years the bible says he looked at him and he said uh, what did he even tell him what was the question again he said do you want that i'll make you whole and he said there is no man that would help me as soon as i want to move to the to the to the to the waters somebody else will jump into it and listen look at an envoy he said no problem in other words all this your grumbling is not necessary i have come chair up he said pick up your bed and go one minute a problem of 38 years dissolved in one minute that is the character of an envoy he steps into a place and begins to legislate on me. no grammar no long story the reality of the kingdom hmm. hallelujah charles and francis hunter of blessed memory great men and women of god one time they had so much of the presence of god upon them they entered a meeting and there were people on wheelchairs and they start they, they didn't even tell any story no prayer no nothing they brought an atmosphere and a culture and they demonstrated it flawlessly 100 people they lifted them out of the wheelchair 100 and voice of his presence hallelujah when naaman was afflicted the bible tells us in second kings chapter 5 that naaman was the captain of of, of 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 syria he was a great and mighty man the bible says but he was leprous and on account of his leprosy when they came and fought the nation of israel the bible says they took a little slave girl is that true and in the passage of time there was one strange envoy who was a seer who does not just go out anyhow the bible called him elisha hallelujah and the little girl told the captain he said oh that you would just follow me there is somebody i know who can help you and the man sluggishly said are you serious you don't know my situation hallelujah and cut the long story short they met the king and listen when the king was afraid nobody told elisha that the man elisha was watching like a television from his room and he said quickly tell the king why is your heart casted? Let him come and know that there is an envoy, that there is a prophet. This land is not barren. There are ambassadors who are alive and strong who will not let the powers of darkness lord it over people. God did not leave himself across this territory without a witness. He said, send him to come. And when he came, Elijah did not even go out. He sent Gehazi. He said, go and tell him it's a simple case. Go and watch seven times and go back free. Ah, that's simple. An envoy is speaking. There is a backing behind him. Hallelujah.
One time there was scarcity. And Jesus, listen, Jesus was trying to teach the disciples the mindset of being envoys. And when the people had not eaten, Jesus looked at the disciples. He said, go and give them food. Come on now, Jesus. Ah! The disciples said, no, this is not part of our ministry. Our ministry here is to help you. Don't disgrace us here. There is no food. These people are plenty. Jesus was teaching them something. He said, every time you see people think of dispensing, don't just think of receiving. You are an envoy. Wherever you go, go as light. Study the terrain of darkness and solve the problem. Don't join in the sympathy. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed tonight? That you are an envoy of his presence. God has mandated you with an unction with an anointing your rema will not help the world until there is a demonstration of the practical reality of the fact that god lives in a man and the apostle calls it the mystery of godliness that god can dwell in a man such that you see an ordinary man but he's not just ordinary he's carrying a backing that this earth cannot speak the man tells you you are blessed and all the forces of nature align themselves and make that word come to pass. That's an envoy. Hallelujah. There are many of our homes, listen to me, that are under demonic yokes. There are many of our family members that if no one arises to help them, they will die. You are that envoy. God seeks envoys. That he will send to different territories. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I've had the privilege of counseling people week after week. And oh, what joy fills my heart. The moment the people begin to come one by one, I am conscious of the fact that I am an envoy. And you see them coming and crying. Oh man of God, the devil has oppressed us. And I tell them, cheer up. I don't tell them, cheer up as stories. I don't tell them, cheer up as many men of God. Just comfort people without result. They say, don't worry. Uh, our Lord and God, no envoy. There is nothing that shows that you are an envoy. Darkness comes and the person goes back with that darkness. We must contend for levels where if men meet you just once, they will know they met an ambassador. Don't get emotional about this message and not do anything about it. Hallelujah. The family came to me for counseling. One of their sons had given the family a very big problem. And when they came, I told them, I said, it's okay, this is the devil here. Hallelujah. In less than one minute, the devil is casted out. I prophesied blessings to the family. It was not up to two days their father bought a new car. An envoy. This is not trial and error. You have become a portal for heaven to find expression at every given time. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Do you believe that there is a dimension of kingdom assignment? that has been committed unto you to be a demonstrator of the presence, the reality, the culture, the life of the kingdom. I vowed to God and I cried years ago and I still cried. I said, Lord, I don't want to be those many preachers with rema that cannot be defended. As a student, before you graduate, there's something called defense. All the stories you have been talking, you are going to stand and say it before people that matter. Is that true? They are going to give you a topic that you think validates you for graduation. Oh, Jesus is this, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can do this, he can do that. And they bring somebody oppressed and you're just looking and wondering. This is why we teach you these things. So that you'll be equipped. Oh, I've had testimonies of many of our people and I've been so blessed. The destruction they are doing to the kingdom of darkness in their spheres. Some of them just went home. They had been waiting. This strike, as bad as it is, has given an opportunity for some people to arrange Satan in their family once and for all. They went home as envoys. Hallelujah. 
the koinonia teachings that we send by the spirit of God they go as envoys of power envoys of the presence of God that's why a lot of people have been touched that we may never see while we are sleeping the Bible says Abel though dead yet speak it for as long as the jurisdiction of our Christianity is just to receive get blessed find a life partner be very happy get breakthrough we will never be relevant as far as the advancement of god's kingdom is concerned are you listening to me unfortunately this is what the congregation of the nigerian church is predominantly made of people who come to god with numerous problems god solves the problem and they don't want any kingdom responsibility responsibility again all they want is to sit down and let a great man of God keep displaying the anointing, keep doing everything, and the people keep sitting there. Are you going to church? Yes, I'm going to church. You go. No. See, listen, brothers and sisters. No matter how much we love people, not everybody in this city is going to be able to come here. Are you getting me? Is that true? No matter how we love people, there are many people. Sometimes people send us messages and say, I wish, I wish that koinonia will come and have a program or will have a program somewhere and i tell them who gave you our number and they now say oh a brother somewhere i say go and tell that person to pray for you hallelujah take the step and fail honorably god will bless you if you are ashamed and embarrassed because of your ego forget about being a champion in the kingdom many of you this is what is stopping us Hallelujah. My own blood sister did not have a job for a long time. I knew that this thing was demonic. I just have not been home for a very long time. And when I was going home, I, I, I had the opportunity to meet her and I prayed with her. I told her, I said, she was trying to give me explanation. I said, don't worry. The explanations are not necessary. Believe me, I know what the problem is. And I prayed for her and that was the end of it. Praise the Lord. She got a job in Benway State. When can you look at somebody, a barren woman, and say, Madam, you are trying to come for Koinonia. They are not around, but they have been teaching us this thing. And Madam, will you allow me to pray? She will look at you and say, Please, I want Josh. Please. I know what, I'm, I'm serious about this child. I'm not playing here. Don't come and play with my womb. No. You say, Madam, just allow me to pray. And you stand and say, Lord, you are real. And I want you to demonstrate the reality of your kingdom. Some of you say, what if she doesn't give birth? Did you collect money? Did you collect money? You get into trouble if you collected money. Did you collect money? It's just say, madam, let me pray for you. And some of you for the first time, as you lay hands on the people, suddenly you will see a demonstration of the kingdom. And the person comes back and says, I have not slept in one week. That simple word you said, be healed. I have been sleeping like a baby. And then you know that the kingdom has come in that environment. This has nothing to do with emoji. Are you getting my point? It should be your default life. Do you believe what I'm saying? look at your loved ones brothers and sisters please look at me there are some of you in your families there is nobody who is born again be honest with me is that true you are the first person god brought out who do you think will go and change them somebody else there are many of you there are forces of witchcraft i went for a program and when they finished the program some people just ran to me while i was counseling and they told me that their mother just broke her leg immediately the mother broke the leg some of the neighbors they said oh yeah get chicken get chicken quick i said what is chicken having to do with this broken leg they said if you want this leg to heal get chicken quick i remember one time my mother hit um, i think she I, I don't know what happened she hit uh, is it a goat or something and people say, hey stop say she look for one error she must look for one error or something and put in the mouth of the of the the the, the bed or the goat or whatever say if you don't do it ha a time came they came to dig a well in our house they said sir we are finished we need chicken there's a way we do it for water to come out 
you are the envoy that will stop that nonsense in your territory a bishop in this country a bishop in this country baths his children with blood before giving them out for marriage and one of his daughters called me one time and said this thing happened to my elder sister I know what is happening in their house now the lady cannot give birth what is all these things and they want to do it bishop and the man told her you better come home. this thing has been like that that there are some people that are doing traditional Christianity I hope you, you, you are they are they are born again but enter their room there's one ancient arrow that they gave them and one jazz that they put in the bowl and some candles eh? and some ropes. They don't use them, but they have kept them. When the going gets tough, the tough gets going. They know how to go and pull it out. Many families have not totally divorced themselves from a lot of cultural things. There are still all kinds of witchcraft festivals and cultural activities that happen in our homes people are happy they are comfortable all kinds of devilish sacrifices are given you are that envoy that god is raising listen until your your christianity begins to confront the gates of hell you are still joking if your christianity has not yet begun to pose a threat to the gate of hell then you are still playing there are some of us ladies here, nobody in your family gets married. Will you not be the first person to say, not only will I break that, I will break it first from my life and go back and release everyone that belongs to me from that captivity. Some of us is the cause of poverty. Right from wherever it has come, to, even if you get job in presidency, you won't be able to buy a bicycle. Why you will not explain because there are all kinds of yokes. Hallelujah. And God is empowering you and sending you. Everywhere the Lord grants me the opportunity to go and minister. Every time it's time for the ministration, I just begin to feel happy for that ministry and that territory because I am coming as an envoy. I know that there is a government that backs me and they that with me are mighty and strong. everywhere the bible says he went he was doing good have you been doing good please listen to me and take it seriously jesus said you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill say i am an envoy say it i'm an ambassador i have a mandate to take the presence the culture and the life of heaven to every sphere of influence if you are not doing this then you are not advancing the kingdom now look at me i want to show you a very big key and then we'll pray there are some of you that may say sir but sincerely i have been taking steps it's just that it has not been working how many of you belong to that category tell the truth you have been taking steps don't raise your hand if you have not taken any step I took a step, I was bold, I made an audacious statement at home, I had to go back and cover my head with blanket. Don't be ashamed. How many of us are in that category? You've taken steps, at least you've said something, you prayed for somebody, nothing happened, but at least you did something. Let me see your hands. Listen to what I'm about to show you because you will be very surprised. I want to activate something right now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen. Please look up. It's one thing to know that you are an envoy of the kingdom. It's another thing to understand the keys that govern the release of God's presence and God's power. I have seen anointed men of God get frustrated when it comes to the point of demonstrating what they teach. When it comes to Bible studies, when it comes to sharing the word, talk is cheap. But when it comes to walking in the reality and bringing men into that experience, this is where a lot of people become powerless. Why is this so? Because 
If the kingdom of God is all about sharing and teaching, there are some of us right now, there is even no need to be pursuing again because honestly, God has opened our eyes to deep things. But there is nothing as frustrating as talking without authority to work in present tense consistently and continually. You come and say, every power in this place, we are going to pray. There are demons keeping people down and you are going to be released. And then at the end of it, you say, all right, I, I hope that this message blessed you. I hope you were motivated and challenged. And the sister said, ah, what about the oppression? You have been making me rejoice. Hallelujah. Or the man of God sees somebody on wheelchair and just dodges as if he didn't see the person. He said, yes, what did you even say is your problem? He said, my own is headache. He said, come, power. Brother, we must contend. Listen, we have not all arrived there, but there should be a, a passion in our heart that we will not stop until we get there. Can I tell you something? One demonstration of the reality of the kingdom will solve 20 or millions of talk. There, there are too much talkatives in the body. Habalists don't talk too much. They demonstrate. Is that true? A priest can be in a city. He cannot even speak very well. Yet the ripple effect of his influence and his presence is being felt. You do anything without inviting him, you will fail woefully. And then the failure will make you to come and visit him. And you say it's not done this way. With this little lesson, let it be known to you that I may be in this coven, but I'm more influential than your community leaders. Many of us are looking for pulpit for people to feel the effect. Jesus did not have a pulpit. Stephen did not have a pulpit. They had presence. Everybody say presence. You don't need a pulpit to let people see the power and the glory of God. You don't need a ministry, a title. What you need is an undeniable presence that principalities and powers must submit to. Hallelujah. I don't know if the woman is in this place, but just permit me to share a bit of the testimony. A woman came to me for counseling and I was surprised. I've heard about this, but I've never seen it one on one hallelujah a woman who came for counseling who gave birth to a baby it was a still birth but the baby came out with the face of a monkey and the body of a human being welcome to planet earth where everything is possible why is it possible because there is God there is Satan. Both are real and are walking. You are the only one who is left. You are not walking. Where that kind of evil can happen, that a spirit can create an imprint of itself and it will materialize in this realm. Where are the envoys? Where are the envoys that are represented across families? The Bible says that in, in, Psalm, in Psalm 82, it was a summoning. God was summoning the mighty men. He said, the Lord stands in the congregation of the mighty. He had to call them and say, what is going on? He said, you have allowed the earth. You know not, neither do they understand. He says, so they grope in darkness. The earth is out of course. Where are the people who are supposed to bring order to the earth? He said, have I not said, ye are gods? And all of you are children of the most high. He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Where are the envoys? Some of you are only benefiting, getting blessed. The devil comes in, you open the door, he enters our families, wreck the lives of people, and we are just watching. Can't you pray? Where is your prayer language? Where is the grace to lock yourself and say, There is an envoy in this house. There is an envoy. The devil is trying to Put your family under some kinds of things. Give yourself three days prayer and fasting. And tell yourself you are contending to release certain things. But we have a bunch of lazy Christians. Who all they want is their personal comfort. Three days? Ah, Josh, if it was six to twelve, I can manage. 
Everybody say, I'm an envoy. Say it one more time, I'm an envoy. Listen. How many members in your family do you want to see the devil finish them before you know God is speaking to you? I'm talking to someone here. How many people in your community are you not seeing the handwriting of Satan everywhere? What are you doing about it? There are families that don't tithe and they are dying an envoy. Have you ever gone to tell them, listen, the reason why this thing is not working is you are violating certain principles of the kingdom. If you tell them and they refuse, no problem. The Bible says, how shall they hear until someone be sent, until there is a preacher? Praise the Lord. I refuse to allow the devil have a field day in my family. Hallelujah. These horns that are judging the lives of people, judging destinies. That's why it gives me pleasure to pray for people. I can pray and minister to people with all my heart from morning till night. Because this is what we are anointed for. We are not just anointed to wear suits. We are anointed to do the works of the kingdom. And can I tell you something? This is the mandate of everybody here. To dislodge the gates of hell. I went home and my younger sister was telling me, she said, I've not slept for days. I said, I, I, what is all this one with my younger sister? And I prayed for her. I gave her communion to go and take. She said, as soon as she took that communion, she slept in a way she has not slept in a long time. I said, this is a signature to principalities and powers. He is in Joss. Trace him with a spiritual GPS. He has come to Joss. That means the powers of darkness must bow. There are many of us that need to stand and say, wherever I go, the presence of God is there. And because the presence of God is there, there must be order in that place. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He is able more than able to accomplish what concerns me today. He is able more than able to handle Everything that comes my way is able, more than able to do much more than I could ever dream. He's able, he is more than able. able to make me what he wants me to do. Now look up. I want to show you a very powerful key. For years, I prayed for people with certain sicknesses and infirmity. And I found out that these people were not just healed. There were others that were healed. God was seen breakthrough here and there. But there's, there seemed like there were certain situations that would not bow. Every time I was praying for the people, I felt helpless myself. You know, there's a way you can pray for somebody. You know that nothing really happened. It's just that if you want to lie to yourself. There's a way you lay hands and you are praying for somebody. At the end of the prayer, even the person is looking at you. You know that nothing really happened. That was the situation. And many preachers can get comfortable and say, after all, I'm doing well. There are ministerial doors opening. But I went to the Lord. I said, Lord, what is wrong? I have seen preachers walk to a sick body in less than one minute. One minute. Hallelujah. I was in a crusade ground when I watched Reinhard Bonke with my own eyes. I was there for six hours. I helped to carry some of the people who were sick because I said I must get this anointing. He casually finished preaching and he took a cup of water and devils were just shaking, waiting for a command. And this guy jokingly, without sweating, 
blind eyes be open deaf ears be open cripples walk i saw it it's not that they told me somebody will wield i saw this thing they were lifting the person everybody was trying to touch the person to stand up i joined with my hand i said whether i'm contributing to it or not and this guy stood up and began to walk brothers and sisters it's not that i've never seen cripples walk but let me tell you there is something about coming near a real miracle and verifying it for yourself hallelujah i saw blind eyes open i saw a lot of things happen i said lord something is not fair in this equation and whatever it is i will go and find out how can a man casually lean on a pulpit and command eyes to open command ears to open and the devil is helpless at his command and i'm here sweating over certain issues and they are just not working that means the problem is not from god the problem is certainly from our end here and i went and i began to explore god wants to answer somebody's question right now i want to show you a powerful mystery never forget it thank you jesus matthew 16 blessed be the name of the lord as you open it just pray in tongues arise shine your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you this is what will happen to somebody this night you will arise your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you you will arise your light is come tonight god will show you a key Glory of the Lord is real upon me. Prophesy to yourself one more time. I will arise. My light is come. And the glory of the Lord is written upon me. Sing it one more time. I will arise and shine. Arise. And the glory of the Lord and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me Matthew 16 Jesus showed us something powerful a mighty key that will open you to a door of the demonstration of power and of the miraculous please don't trivialize what you are about to hear let the eyes of someone be open my God let the eyes of someone be open hallelujah listen now look up please verse 13 when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi listen Jesus had been walking with his disciples. Let me have two or three disciples. I am Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus, follow me. Jesus went everywhere with these people. Is that true? They watched him demonstrate miracles. They saw a lot of things. These guys were amazed. They saw the sea, the waves. They saw the way situations were helpless at the presence of Jesus. And Jesus said, gentlemen i always hear you conversing he said who do men say that i am they see this mighty man doing miracles and i'm sure they have been talking some have said he's fake some have said this guy may be one belzebub somewhere he said who do they say i am and the disciples were happy verse 14. the bible says that they were so excited because it was a secret question they had been asking themselves and they said some say you are john the baptist why because john the baptist had been caught in the prison and they didn't see him some say you are john the baptist some say you are elijah 
because the Bible says before the great and terrible day of the Lord Malachi 4 Elijah the spirit of prophecy will come so you are that manifestation of Elijah and others said Jeremiah the weeping prophet who wrote a lot about the lamentations of, of the spirit of God he said oh you are just one of the prophets and then he laughed now follow me he said all right I have heard what they say you have walked with me you have seen me do miracles you participated what do you say that I am okay they say I'm a prophet fine they are wrong but you you saw the miracle they said it was fake but you you were in koinonia you saw the demons you saw them being casted out it's not something that you watch on TV that you say it was. He said, in light of all that you have seen, what is your conclusion about me? He said, what do you say that I am? Listen. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. Next verse. And Jesus said unto him, hmm, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, son of Jonah, he said, for flesh and blood has that means this operation is not in the realm of flesh and blood. If you ever want to walk in it, flesh and blood cannot deliver this dimension of result. He said, This revelation you've had now, it is not by flesh and blood. Are you getting me? Flesh and blood has not revealed it to you. He said, But my father, which is in heaven, listen. Peter, you know why Jesus asked them? Jesus needed to ask them to initiate a principle that he was going to teach the body of Christ. Verse 18. He said, and I say unto you, thou art Peter, listen, and upon this rock, what rock? The rock of the revelation you just caught. What is the revelation? The revelation is the fact that nothing just happens by flesh and blood until there is a spiritual understanding that backs the activity upon that revelation i will build the structure of my church that means for every time you will perform any activity there must be a revelation that you build upon otherwise the activity will just be normal are you getting this revelation in other words listen i can lay hands but the realm of the spirit will check what revelation do i know that activates the power over this activity if there is no revelation power will not flow it's a law in the spirit peter i see that you have gotten a spiritual understanding it is upon this understanding I will build my church to function that means whatever they have to do they will first build on a rock a revelation must be the platform for any activity to be carried out communion without revelation powerless anointing without revelation powerless so I can lay hands I tell you I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in a very mighty way Zekete rata mam proto sobeka areke talata poka reposo to bariata. He said, I will build my church upon a revelation. When you get this revelation, you will step into a realm where you become an envoy. Listen, listen. Listen to me. The Bible says a time came when Peter, James, and John, who became the pillars of the church, they went with Jesus. Is that true? To the Mount of Transfiguration. And the Bible says, listen, we were going to see the practical demonstration of that scripture. The Bible says they brought an epileptic patient. Everybody watch. Come, sir. They brought an epileptic patient. Now, it was the turn of the disciples to heal is that true the bible says they kept doing everything that jesus did exactly but nothing happened is that in your bible they did exactly they saw jesus doing everything they did it the guy didn't get healed 
and when Jesus came down with three of the disciples he saw his disciples struggling that was what grieved his heart he said until now because he knew it was a law it would have happened without him anyway and the Bible says he looked at the boy he says since when did he have this condition and they said since he was a child it throws him into the fire throws him into whatever and he said I believe help thou my unbelief the father said and the Bible says Jesus rebuked a deaf and dumb spirit out of him and the Bible says the guy was manifesting like you always see here and fell as though he was dead people thought he was dead and they picked him up and he got up he was sound the disciples said in one minute we did the same thing what did you do differently is it not the rebuking we also rebuked we rebuked him we were tired power did not flow i'm showing you the key why you have not been seeing the move of god it's not about cramming the words i use you will say the same thing and not see anything there is a secret hallelujah many people think it's about talking like the man of god or dressing like the man of god or reciting what the man of god is saying that will not bring power brothers and sisters when jesus did that and the demons obeyed him the disciples went and met jesus listen the disciples say ah, ah why couldn't we cast out see when you are studying your bible when you see jesus about to reveal something pay attention the disciples were asking why they could not do these things and jesus said because of your unbelief very simple like that because of your unbelief then he says however this kind goeth not but by fasting and prayer hold on so he told them the problem was unbelief and he told them to remedy unbelief part of the spiritual activities that will happen is fasting and prayer when you fast and pray something happens in your spirit that brings you to a position where you can now believe listen just follow me i want to establish something very very powerfully when jesus did that listen a time came when jesus now said all right guys i have tested you a while he said go in my name go not everywhere but to the lost sheep of israel go two by two listen now it was their turn the bible says they went they were all fidgeting and they now looked at somebody and said in jesus name suddenly they saw the demon obey they said ah this thing is working oh they tried it again they saw that it worked they didn't even know what was happening and the bible says they returned rejoicing and said finally even they said even the demons were subject to us in thy name jesus said uh -uh, you have not gotten the point don't just rejoice that demons are subject to you rejoice because your name is you know is written in heaven and so on and so forth and then a time came listen jesus said as my father has sent me he said so send i you hold on it's not just saying nature there was a way i walked in the earth there was something that made those miracles to happen he said now i speak that let there be access to you to walk in those dimensions so that you'll be able to see those miracles that means listen please for every time you carry out a spiritual activity and it works let me tell you what happens in the spirit there is a system in the realm of the spirit that cross checks whether you understand what you were doing or not if there is no revelation that backs that activity power will not flow are you getting my point the sons of skiva they call that man they say we adore you the demon said not so i am seeing you in the spirit your house is built on sand where is the rock upon which this laying on of hands is built upon i do not see any revelation for that reason i will not go listen brothers and sisters do you know the power of this communion that we take people just take communion oh he's blessed and we take and nothing happens 
But the day you step into the revelation of what it can do, the power of God will change that communion to the literal blood and body of Jesus Christ and it will answer in your body at once. There are many Christians trying to do spiritual motions without revelation and the Bible told us about those people. It said there were two people that built. One built on a revelation, a rock. Is that true? Another built on sand. He was just building on religion. The Bible says now the wind came and tested it. And the one who was built upon a rock, revelation, there was, he was not just giving for nothing. He was not just tithing for nothing. There was an insight in the spirit that makes him to carry out that activity. So I don't just pray in tongues because I'm seeing prayer band pray. I'm praying on a rock. There is a revelation. I have come to know what prayer can do. So every time I pray, power flows through that revelation to edify my spirit and produce results. This is why the prayer life of many Christians is, is not working. They humiliate themselves, pray for hours and wonder why things don't happen. What rock have you been laying hands on the sick upon? What is the revelation that granted you access? Based on what did you prophesy to that brother and say in the name of Jesus, doors open? What was the rock that supported that prophecy? Hallelujah. When David was about to defeat Goliath, he knew that he cannot make empty noise. And he said, you come to me with your spares, but I come to you in a name. There is a name I know. There is a covenant I have. There is a revelation. David and Goliath, on account of my covenant with Jehovah, I will take off your head and I know the power will flow. And God said, that is it. You have gotten the equation. Now you bring out the sling. How can an ordinary sling kill a man? A revelation produces power. Envoys of power. This is why you see all these things that are happening, happening. It will happen every time, forever. It's like a switch. When you know how to turn it on, you become an infant of fire. So you enter anywhere. You are an envoy. You know how to compel powers to bow. You know what to say to make them answer you. You know what to say to make them leave. You know what to say to dislodge the powers of darkness. There is something you must know there are many preachers who preach they listen to a man of god's revelation they copied it and they are pasting it they preach a message that is supposed to bring healing but healing does not happen they preach a message that should bring breakthrough but breakthrough does not happen take your place take your place Take your place, 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 call his name, Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Hallelujah. Hear me. When I caught this revelation, I was excited. And the first time we had the opportunity to organize our crusade as a ministry, 
it was now the time to put this in practical proof hallelujah and in that crusade ground there were sick people there were all kinds of oppressed people and when we began to see the power and the glory of God I said this thing works it's not a lie the fault is not from God there is a fountain you can become a walking dispenser of the kingdom a dispenser of power when men shake you something will happen in your life because you are full of the word for everything there is a revelation even when you shake people you know that you are a blessing so that revelation will force something to get into them this may be the missing link behind your praying for the sick you have laid hands but you are just copying light has not come upon you there is no unction that supports what you are doing take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me take my body my soul my spirit breathe on me follow them not him them them a congregation a people who believe God enough to know that he's not playing when he says all power belongs to him he means it we are going to pray I like you to pray and say Lord do something in my spirit that will cause light to enter me. I want to begin to see fruits. Come on now, pray. Koinonia, this is not how you pray. I want to see prayer warriors. I want to see men of prayer. I want to see 
I command you every yoke that has tied you down, every yoke that has tied your family down, every curse, every protection, let them pray, 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 there is power, when you pray, there is fire, when you pray, I command powers bow in the name of Jesus at Koinonia destinies are changed at Koinonia eyes are liberated at Koinonia generals are raised and voice of power and voice of grace men of dexterity men of authority men of audacity confronting grace confronting territory hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. What many of us need is an unction from the Lord that will suddenly make the things you read become alive. It's a spirit. It's called the spirit of revelation. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. I want you to receive it inside and outside with all your heart. It's time for you to begin to walk as an ambassador. Hallelujah. I'm going to count three. And at the count of three, I'd like you to shout the name Jesus. And as you shout, something will come upon your life. Are you ready? One, two, three. Take it, 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 receive it, the spirit of revelation, outside, take it, outside, let it come like fire, eyes be open, yes, be open, let
let the spirit of faith come upon you. Take it, faith to believe, faith to believe, faith to believe. Command miracles. Let blind eyes be opened. Let deaf ears be opened through your hands. Whoever you bless is blessed. Whoever you bless is blessed. When you speak, your words are backed up by an authority that is not of this realm. Your voice will be like the voice of God. Your voice will be like the voice of God. Whatever you stop will stop. Whatever you stop will stop. Whatever you bind is bound. Whatever you lose is lose. Envoys of his presence. I pray for you from today. Let the manifest presence of God, let the angel of his presence begin to walk with you. That everywhere you go, you don't need to tell men you are anointed. There is an angel of his presence that will go with you. Sinners will break down when they see you. Devils will cry out without you casting them. I proclaim upon you from tonight you become an envoy of power, an envoy of his presence, an envoy of his glory. Under the apostolic unction, I command as touching the grace given to me if I be sent of God. Let this mantle fall on as many people. Ma take take bakata. Sekete leka parakata. And voice of power. And voice of power. And voice of miracles. And voice of wisdom. And voice of breakthrough. Go and command breakthrough. Go and release your family members. The cause that has kept them. Go as a savior. Go and command marriages. Go and heal the barren. Let the barren be healed. Go and raise the dead. Go and raise the dead. Go and cast out devils. Prophesy business breakthrough to people. Prophesy career breakthrough. Your words carry power. Your hands carry power. Here at Koinonia, I stand as an apostle of God and I proclaim my God the same power that backs me. Let it back your people. The same authority that backs me. Let it back your people. Listen, the journey of my life, listen to me please, has been a journey of progressive 
walk with the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Listen to me, please. Exactly a month ago, hear me. I was sleeping and the spirit of God woke me. He said, it's time for you to step into a new phase of the anointing and a new phase. I always see it. I see a military man in the spirit and then a batch is added. And the Lord says, there are many more responsibilities and there is an anointing. And I prayed, I said, Lord, you cannot just be empowering me alone. Your people need to walk in this kingdom power. And all through, the Lord had been brewing it in my heart. And the Lord kept telling me, it is my desire. Let your people believe me enough. Moses said, I desire that my spirit will even come upon everybody. My greatest desire is not to be one invincible man of God. No. But that there will be people. And you are these people. To spread across. Hallelujah. And from the time the spirit of the Lord told me this. I knew that he increased the anointing upon my spirit. And he measured a thousand cubits. You can know. You can see a man that walks with God and say this is different. Something has changed. A thousand cubits. And this is why whenever I receive it, I make sure that everybody is a partaker of it. If you don't walk with it, it is not my fault. But in the days to come as we prepare for next year, you will see things that will surprise you. When you are faithful with the level of grace that God gives unto you and you are diligent, you will know and everybody around you will know when something, a thousand cubits has been measured again and there is a rise. This is why I worship him. Brothers and sisters, don't get emotional about this meeting alone. And don't get arrogant over the anointing you have received. Listen, authority in the spirit is for you to go and be a blessing, not to go and build an empire. Do not emulate these wrong things men of God try to bring to the body of Christ to make it look like there is one superstar. Let me tell you, every one of us have been anointed and called. Whether in business, whether in education, these anointings are not just for healing the sick alone, but opening people up to dimensions of the spirit. And if you do not use this and you let it dormant, it will dry up in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are going to pray just one prayer point and we are going to round up. You are going to say, Lord, this anointing I have received, I want to see it working. I'm tired of receiving things and falling down and I cannot say this is what happened. Please pray. I beg you, my brothers and sisters, if you will pray this prayer from your heart. Say, Lord, bring a sick body to me. Bring an oppressed person to me, oh God. Bring a sinner my way. Let me put this unction and this revelation to work. Bring a family my way. I'm ready to walk as an envoy of power. Pray and say, Lord, the things I'm taught in Koinonia, I don't just want to be a listener. I want to be on fire. There are many of you who just love God casually. But today you are talking to the Lord and he's hearing you. You are saying, Lord, I'm joining the band of spiritual people on fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you an assignment. Everyone here, this week, I want you to call every member of your family 
and tell them, tell me one thing. I have been taught in Koinonia that I am an envoy of power. Call your family members and say, what are the issues? I want to speak. I'm not agreeing with you. I am coming as an envoy. This is not the issue of agree with me. I am coming with an authority that is not of this realm. Whether they believe you or not, you don't need to be hard on them. Listen, sister, even if you look weak, everybody knows you to be a bad girl. Something has happened to you. Are you getting me? Don't let the devil take your yesterday and say, even you, you want to prophesy. Yes, even you. The Bible says when the spirit of God came upon Saul, he became another man. It is this another mind dimension that we are releasing you to go and manifest. That the people that have seen you, you are in a shop and people just see you sit down. Customers are not coming. And you say, mommy, watch what will happen. Father, just as I have been taught in the name of Jesus, I compel men to come and patronize this. And you sit back and suddenly you will see people coming out of everywhere. And you tell your family members, this is the signature of the kingdom the kingdom comes every time an envoy manifests the will of god so go to those families those barren people you know those neighbors you have never prayed for them because you are afraid you say the fibroid is too big or the person is totally blind just try it try it everybody young and old make this week the week that you take steps of faith you are seeing one sinner that God is always talking to you that this person will be a great person. You are afraid of confronting the person. Let this be the week that you go in love and tell the person, my brother, I need to talk to you. Jesus loves you. And you will be surprised that this same power, this is how you will see the person break down and you will be wondering what is happening. Hallelujah. You know somebody that has been writing jam, writing jam, writing wayek, writing wayek, and you know the person is serious. It's a different thing if the person is lazy. Or somebody that has always been stealing. Somebody fornicating every time. He loves God. He's trying to stop. You tell him, I now know what is wrong. I just want you to let me pray for you. And you say, Satan, thou foul devil of lust. You get out of his life. And you watch and see the transformation that comes from his life. Some of you need to go and lock the door and you be a prophet over your own life. Lay hands on yourself and begin to prophesy and say, Satan, an end has come. You are seeing your brother and sister. Their marriage is about breaking. No child. Now I have taught you here that barrenness is not a medical condition. Barrenness is a spiritual condition. It's a sign that there is a presence of a spirit in that place. And if you don't get that devil out of there, they will use every kind of medical therapy and it will not work. Hallelujah. There is nothing you are truly looking for that you will ever find if the Holy Spirit does not lead you there. Are you hearing me? There is nothing, I don't care what it is. There is nothing you are truly looking for. Success, prosperity, husband, wife, job, you will never find it if you disregard the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you in advance, you will never, ever find it until the Holy Spirit leads you there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated. You will never find it if it does not lead you there. You can pretend you have found it. You will never find joy. You will never find fulfillment. All of these things people chase after. No. You will never find it disregarding the Holy Spirit. He has become my all. He has become my all. He will turn an ordinary person see let me tell you something listen this chase for recognition this chase for fame this chase for greatness will keep ending people in utter frustration until the holy spirit leads you there please take what i'm saying seriously i'm yet to see one man that truly found life and all it can give 
with the true joy and satisfaction without the Holy Spirit. It's not true. It's not true. I, I need you to understand that I'm, these things are not just done as a religious jamboree. Some of us have never paid attention to the things of the Spirit. We think if I just come, it's possible to be here right now and your heart is not even with God. You are just here and then you will find out that you will never get that blessing. Are you not tired of trying to find fulfillment outside of Him? Why don't you settle down? Come. Be on His side and see what He will make out of your life. Be magnified, O oh Lord. You are highly exalted And there is nothing you can't do Oh Lord, my eyes are on you Be magnified Oh Lord, be We said this thing years ago and many people thought we were just talkatives and jokers are you hearing what i'm saying this thing i have been saying this thing for years but when you don't pay attention to the things of god your suffering has just begun because there are many people after 20 years 30 years 40 years of a meaningless life of utter frustration they find out that everything they have put their confidence on has failed one by one the dangerous thing about that kind of failure is it all does not happen in one day it will keep happening again after one cycle finishes another cycle of failure will start but the way of the lord is the way of wisdom choose that way now i choose the way for the way for the way of the lord is the way of i choose the way of the lord his presence can guarantee you anything in life when you honor God's presence for you, success is an issue of when, not if. It no longer becomes magic. Hallelujah. I'm teaching tonight a very powerful topic, and I like your heart to be open. Luke 14. Jima katabala namakata. Luke 14. Hallelujah. Say after me, my Christianity must produce an evidence. Say it, my Christianity must produce results. Say it like you believe it, my Christianity must produce results. I forbid you from this resultless Christianity that frustrates you and frustrates those around you. When there is an evidence in your life that God is real and that the truths in his word are real, let me tell you the truth. You will compel men to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and you will turn many to righteousness. Hallelujah. It's gotta be more, gotta be more. It's gotta be more than this. For desperate people do desperate things. We press in need. 
There's gotta be more, gotta be more. Help me say, there's gotta be more than this. Hallelujah. I can never be a failure in life. Never, never, never. I've left that circle forever till Jesus comes. I told you last week, understanding, everybody say understanding. When you have, he said, in all thy getting, get understanding. Come, Mike. Come, climb these stairs. No, just stay down. Climb up. Climb up. Did you need to think to climb this? Because you know how to do it. Go back and do it again. This is what we call predictability. Your life can be that accurate and that circumspect that you know that you know that you know that you know that you have come out of certain realms forever. Your life can be that predictable that you can become a success. So for you, it's a matter of when, not if. There are some of us, success is still at the realm of if. Because we are still hoping that one day, bless you, God will see what I'm doing. And then maybe he will just bless me. Let me tell you in advance. You don't need to wait till after 10 years. Let me tell you now, you are wasting your time. It will not work that way. There are keys. He said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. He said, by reason of that keys, whatever you bind in the earth will be bound in the heavens. Whatever you lose. Until you have these keys, you cannot command authority in this realm. Many of us have been listening, but we have not been paying attention. Today is an opportunity again. Why don't you tell yourself, look, I want to settle down. Let me understand this thing once and for all. Hallelujah. I'm preaching tonight on extraordinary accomplishments. The cost. Extraordinary accomplishments. Colon. The cost. What does it take? To be a sign and a wonder. What does it take to be a living wonder? What does it take to function in this earth realm as if you are not a normal human being? What does it take to ride towards the things that force men to bow to? We have been, throughout last month, we were taking a series on success. And I thought we had rounded up until I was praying. And the Lord told me, no, there's one more extraordinary accomplishments the cost tonight i want to open you up to the cost dimension of accomplishments in life the cost dimension hallelujah this word cost and price these are two words that many believers hate we hate that word the moment you say cost or price, people just resent it and they get angry. But when you say gift or reward, people say, aha, this is what I want. But the moment you say cost, we hate opening up ourselves to the cost implication of life. Unfortunately, let me tell you the truth. Get it straight and get it this night. I don't care who preaches what for you. Don't mislead yourself. You will never, never enter the realm of true greatness and extraordinary accomplishments if you deny the fact that there is a price and there is a cost. So the first thing I want you to know this night is that extraordinary accomplishment is very costly. It's very costly. It's not just costly. It's very costly. Number two, ignorance and failure is also very costly. So, whether you embrace the life 
that will bring supernatural accomplishments or not you are going to pay the price in this life period hallelujah outstanding success had a, a huge price tag it's very costly failure also has a price tag it is also costly the difference is this for accomplishment and success you pay the price before it comes for failure you pay the price after it comes you get that but you are going to pay the price in any way so you can choose to pay it now you don't need to say i claim success no you don't need to claim it if you pay the price now that is your act of faith to show that you have chosen you don't just choose by saying i choose alone he said if you call yourself the sons of abraham you would do what abraham did hallelujah people hate the word cost they hate the word price and so many people especially preachers have tried to create nice messages to explain away the fact that there is a cost implication to supernatural accomplishment let me tell you something go and ask any man whether in the secular world or in the christendom who has risen to and made any level of supernatural accomplishment of whatever sort ask them and they will tell you there is a price to pay hallelujah the one time wealthiest man in america was asked a question he said what is the secret of success and he laughed he said secret number one know what the price is number two pay the price period know what it is pay the price and tonight i pray for you that the fear of paying the price for a supernatural life let that fear leave you because let me tell you something you are afraid of what must come so it's better to develop courage and face it once and for all remember we preach the message give me this mountain in every mountain there are giants if you find a mountain that there are no giants run away every mountain there are giants life is full of men who paid several prices defied certain things and today the world is celebrating them and if you must do much for god there is a price to pay don't let anybody fool you there is a price to pay hallelujah and tonight we will look at the cost factor the cost implication hallelujah if we do not want to end up like many people that we have seen or many believers frustrated humiliated then it's important to pay the price right now i will always quote this scripture lamentations 3 27 he said it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth now that you have strength why don't you make up your mind to flog it out with destiny so that you can enter the sabbath and rest once and for all the bible says and on the seventh day god rested i've said it again and again if you have not entered your seventh day and you are resting let me tell you life will kick you out of that rest in a painful way you only rest when you have entered your seventh day some from day one they are already seeking rest we live in a generation of comfort we like comfort hallelujah a lot of people like com we love comfort we hate inconvenience no no don't keep me standing for 10 minutes uh -uh, i can't take it ah the sun is too hot go and buy umbrella for me we 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 are addicted to comfort to a to a a degree that it is robbing us of paying the price for a glorious destiny hallelujah someone starts a business the first profit that comes is buying jeans and shoe and buying one one 
rickety car that you will keep maintaining it for the next how many years until everything eats up his money but to pay the price and say oh let me just wait let me endure no i want to prove a point i want to prove a point comfort comfort has destroyed a lot of people comfort is good but you see let me tell you something when it gets to a point where it stops you from paying the price then you are you are eating your future in your today and this is the case with a lot of people hallelujah this is what has birthed this false and fake life that people live they try to pretend realms of success they have not yet come into and so they put themselves under unnecessary pressure hallelujah it's very important say after me i will pay the price please say it i will pay the price look at me don't you think this message is not important this night because i am going to be attacking some ugly religious spirits that always think that when you are teaching about success and accomplishment they think it's not spiritual enough i thought we just came and we should be praying or i thought we should come and do this sooner or later your lack of paying attention will punish you to a point that you will backslide spiritually without knowing hallelujah when you become a father and you know that you cannot be praying from morning till night you have the fees of children to pay is that true you have responsibilities at that point you will know that one key does not open every door in the spirit it takes keys and opening up yourself to them may your children never look at you and say daddy what is what is the benefit of all of this christianity may people not look at you in the village and say you are you are an unbeliever i am a christian what is the difference see let me tell you something the kingdom of god is a reward system are you following me now the kingdom of god operates on a reward system so you are rewarded for complying with kingdom principles i made up my mind years ago that i was going to end some things in my life forever and I knew that to do that, comfort will be out of the way. And this is my first encouragement for you this night. Take this unnecessary spirit of luxury and comfort. It's not bad. Pack it up and keep it. A day will come when you will be comfortable indeed. Not now. The Bible says the vision will speak at the end no vision speaks at the beginning he says it in the end it will speak hallelujah another deceitful approach to success is waiting for god to do everything have you seen people like that i know god will do it i know my god will do it are you not the king of the heavens you can do anything you want to do you can bless whoever you want to bless you can curse whoever you want to curse let me tell you straight to the point if that is your philosophy then your suffering has not yet begun the bible says the heaven of heavens belong to the lord he said but the earth has he given to the sons of men if you do not take charge of your destiny you may be very surprised hallelujah I'm going to be talking about three aspects three levels of the cost number one we'll quickly look at the spiritual cost the first cost is the spiritual cost you want to live a life of extraordinary supernatural accomplishments no matter who you are the first price to pay is your spiritual life the spiritual cost hallelujah there are many of you right now 
if i ask you what are you doing towards your success you say i'm trying to look for money i'm looking for capital may god just bless me let me just get money and see what i will do or somebody is running somewhere say i'm just trying to look for a job i'm trying to look for this and we pay very little attention if at all for some of us our spiritual lives we wake up in the morning 5 30 stand at, 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 at the junction outside and you see everybody waking up in the morning hurrying running from morning until night ask them what they are looking for they tell you i want to move forward i want to make progress i want to make meaning out of my life but the bible says except the lord builds the house he said the word there is not except the lord build it for you except the lord becomes the architect of the house it says they labor in vain and except the lord watches over a city said the watchman watch it in vain he said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he give it to his beloved sleep hallelujah let's look at the scripture quickly second chronicles 26 second chronicles 26 Second Chronicles 26. If you're there, say amen. Verse 5. Are you there? Verse 5. It says, This is speaking about the king Uzziah. Listen, please. He said, And he sought God. In the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the visions of God. And he said, oh, I thought it was projected. He said, as, and as long as he sought God, what happened? God made him prosper. Is that in your Bible? As long as he sought God, what happened? So his prosperity, his accomplishments in life were directly tied to his passion. Genuine passion for God. Many of us do not have a passion for God. We only love God because we have been told that he is mighty. And if you come close to him, maybe he will drive demons away from your life. And then success will come quickly. If you want to be blessed and to do much for God in this kingdom, the first requirement is your spiritual life. Uzziah. He sought God. He says, as long as he sought God, God made him to prosper. Let's read on. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines and broke down the wall of God. Look at his accomplishments. Look at the mighty things that he did because God was with him. And the wall of Ashdod and built cities about Ashdod and among the Philistines. Verse 7. And God helped him. Did you see that now? God did what? God helped him. Against the Philistines. And against the Arabians. Who dwelled in Gubal. And in Milnim. And the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah. Look at all the things that happened in his life. Because he sought God. Let's read on. And his name spread abroad. This is the fame many people are looking for. And his name, why? He sought God. He sought the health of his spiritual life first. He was not just seeking fame and power. In the Bible, everyone who truly sought God made a mark in this life. Listen to me. The first cost is your spiritual life. Let's finish up. For he strengthened himself exceedingly. Nine. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem. Look at this accomplishment. At the corner gate and at the valley gate and at the turning of the wall and fortified them. Also, he built towers in the desert. In the desert. He built towers in the desert. Do you know how the desert sand is? The desert sand is not solid whatever you build if you are not careful but he said he built towers in a desert extraordinary accomplishment because he sought god 
Hallelujah. And he dig many wells. For he had much cattle. Both in Shephelah. And in the plains. Husband men also. And vine dressers in the mountains. And so on and so forth. Read verse 11. He said moreover. Uzziah had a host of fighting men. Who is this strange man. That was just breaking records. Smashing records again and again. Defying the things that had been done in his days. The Bible tells us his secret. He said he sought God. He sought God. Look at this kind of exploits. This is our year of supernatural exploits. It doesn't just happen by magic. Let's finish up. We'll read to verse 15. Who went out to war by bands. According to the numbers of their reckonings. By the hand of Jael. The scribe. Hallelujah. And then let's read verse um, 14. And Uzziah prepared for them throughout all the hosts, shields and spears and helmets and coats of mail and bows and slings to cast stones. Verse 15. And he made in Jerusalem what? Engines. The first person in the Bible recorded to invent engines. This guy broke through in several circles. The Bible says that he invented them invented by cunning men to be on the towers upon the bulwarks so that when they came to attack them they used engines to defend themselves extraordinary accomplishments because of the quality of his spiritual life he said to shoot arrows and great stones without listen he said and his name spread where notice the bible in the previous verse said his name spread abroad now see another dimension his name spread far abroad he said for he was marvelously helped the first time he was helped now he was marvelously helped until he was strong have you been paying attention have you been paying this spiritual price oh there is a spiritual price to pray for success and the beautiful thing is that at any point in your life you can start are you hearing what i'm saying so per adventure your spiritual life has not been an issue for you you just believe that somehow you can navigate yourself through life let me tell you right now hear the voice of the lord he said i wish above all things that ye prosper and be in health to the proportion to which your soul prospereth. We have neglected the spiritual prosperity of the soul. Our intimacy and our relationship. There are many things that can distract us. Looking for money. Looking for success. Wanting connection. Wanting to go here and there. Wanting to go abroad. Germany, Italy, Dubai. Everybody wants to go. Let me tell you something. If you pay attention to your spiritual life first you will be helped the holy ghost is called a helper and the bible says uzziah was marvelously helped he enjoyed a rich dimension of the holy spirit let me tell you when god backs you you must succeed it doesn't matter what the odds are say i take my spiritual life seriously the spiritual cost under the spiritual cost the first price you need to pay is revelation and wisdom. Everybody say revelation. You want to accomplish much spiritually in this kingdom. We are talking about your spiritual cost now. Revelation and wisdom. Paul prayed to the church, especially in uh, uh, the, the, the church in, 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 in Ephesus. Ephesians 1 from verse 17 down. He said, I pray. To the God of our Lord Jesus Christ that he may grant unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The heart of your understanding, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know. Revelation and wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the ability to take the truth of God's word and put it into practical application to deliver results for you. Anything you claim to know that is not useful in your life, is not advancing the kingdom, is not improving the quality of your life, dump it. It's a waste of time. 
Wisdom is not just the right application of knowledge. It's the ability to take the truth of God's word and offer solution to life's problems. And the Bible says, Daniel 12 verse 3, it says, And they that be wise shall shine like the firmament of the heavens. Daniel 12, he said, And they that be wise shall do what? Shall shine as the brightness. You want to be a star? You want to rise above? Get wisdom. Get revelation. Understand how things work in the spirit. When you understand the spiritual laws that are responsible for delivering certain results, I promise you, life will bow to you. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? So, pay the price. Let your spiritual growth be constructive. It's not just coming to church and learning all the nice spiritual languages. Go for revelation. This is what we seek to teach. Not revelation of stories, principles, keys, keys, keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. When you find the key to this door, you can open it. When you find the key to this door, you will open it. When you find the key to that door, you will open it. If you do not have the door, you can pretend the door is open. But sooner or later, life will demand you to go outside and it will be evident that you do not have the key. There are many people pretending to have found it rather than humbling themselves to say, no, look, let's take this thing. Can I tell you something? No matter how long, find it. He said the kingdom of God is like a man who is searching for a pearl. When he found it, he sold everything he had to buy that land. When you pay the price to get revelation, it will reward you. Please listen to me. Finance in the kingdom has spiritual laws. Health in the kingdom has spiritual laws. Victory over sickness and death and failure has spiritual laws. Success in life has spiritual laws. Favor has spiritual laws. They don't just happen. A good marriage is governed by spiritual laws. Hallelujah longevity in life is governed by spiritual laws how many of these laws do you know that is how you can measure the quality of your life i want to ask you a very practical question how many of these laws do you know hallelujah very important revelation 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 when you love the Lord with all your heart, He will open you up to revelations. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. The Bible says, I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered the heart of any man. What God has in store, not for them that speak in tongues, for them that love Him. When you love God, He will open you up to secrets. And brother, when you find it, you have found it forever. When you truly love God. And for as long as he sought the Lord. God made him to prosper. Have you been seeking the Lord? In your quest for accomplishment. Have you been paying? A, is God part of your success equation? I love the Lord with all my heart. The Bible says in 1 Kings 3 verse 3, it says, and Solomon loved the Lord. Solomon loved, that's what, that's, that was the basis of everything that he did. And Solomon loved the Lord. Do you really love the Lord? Enough to seek him with all your heart. To seek to know his ways. And how do you know those who love the Lord? It's very clear. John 14, 21. So don't just say, I love the Lord. We are going to see it now. John 14, 21. Hallelujah. It says, He that keepeth my commands, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. So who is the one that loves God? Please listen. Who is, it? Who is the one that loves God? 
He didn't say the one who claims, I love God, I love God, I love God. No, -uh. If you truly love him, you will abide by his commands. He said, And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and I will do what? Manifest, reveal myself. God is not revealing himself to everybody. There are certain people that attract him with their passion for him. This is a big secret. Let's look at verse 23 of the same verse. Same chapter, sorry. Jesus answered and said, If a man love me, he will do what? He will do what? So have you been keeping his words? If you have not been keeping his words, you do not love him. Period. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him. And we will come to him. Are you seeing there? And make our habitation, our abode. This is the secret of intimacy. Love for God. The Bible says the secret things of the Lord are with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenants. Many people, let me tell you the truth. Many people want to serve God. But they don't love the Lord. They respect God though. They are Christians. They are not doing but that passion for God. They don't have it. And then they wonder why God seems to make himself real to other people. I've shown you the secret of intimacy. If you truly love the Lord, you will attract him by creating the atmosphere that brings his presence. Love for God. Hallelujah. Let me share with you under revelation just three keys that will guide us we are still under the spiritual cost and under that we are still under revelation so love for god i've told you love for god is one key to intimacy the presence of god you can have power without loving god it's impossible to have the presence of god without loving him no number two obedience obedience is very important everything in the kingdom is tied to obedience everything 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 in the kingdom is tied to obedience just one scripture so that we we'll put it under there deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i commanded this day he said this blessing shall come upon you and shall overtake you hallelujah said you shall be exalted above all nations and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you deuteronomy 28 verse 1 so obedience 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 doing the word faith is not just saying what god has said faith is doing what god has said so love the key to the presence of god the key to deep secrets in the spirit obedience the key to committing God in anything you are doing. The Bible says you are only willing to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete. He told Cain, Cain was angry because Abel's sacrifice was being received and his own was not being received. He told Cain, he said, if you do what your brother did, will your sacrifice not be accepted? So obedience. Anytime you want God to show up and to perform in your life, make sure you obey his principles the last key that i'll talk about quickly under revelation is the law of tithing let me shock you very quickly tithing has nothing to do with money look at me tithing does not bring money the bible never tied tithing to money let me tell you what tithing does hallelujah sorry Many people tithe because they want money wrong. Tithing as a principle and as a key in the kingdom has nothing to do with financial prosperity. It is your giving that brings financial increase. Are you hearing me? Tithing opens the heavens. See, listen, listen, look at me. There's no time. We have to touch other aspects and I want us to pray. Please look at me. The Bible says God created many trees in the Garden of Eden. Is that true? But God kept a tithe in that Garden of Eden. I want to show you where tithing started from. So long as that tithe was not touched, the heavens were open. 
God could come in the cool of the day. Is that true? Please answer me. Tithing is one of the spiritual laws that is responsible for open heavens. So whatever you do under that open heavens will now prosper. That's why tithing does not just affect finance alone. Health, longevity, different aspects of our lives. The reason why we preachers only reduce tithes to money is simply because we want the money. Period. The day man touched the tithe, what happened? The heavens were closed and they sent him out of the garden of Eden. Look at how important tithing is to God. So long as man did not touch the tithe, he could enjoy any other three. He touched the tithe, God sent him out. So every many of us are operating under closed heavens. You are giving but under closed heavens. You are serving God but under closed heavens. Let me tell you something. I don't care whatever you do. See, the devourer is not a demon. The devourer is a principality. He operates on legal grounds. Principalities operate on legal grounds. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That means you can you don't pray them away. You don't pray them away. There are kingdom principles that keep them at bay. Please understand this. He said, In my name they shall cast out what? But he said they overcame them by it is in my name. Many of us have been praying, trying to cast away principalities in our lives no it is your obedience of kingdom principles that keep them far that means if you are not a tighter even god cannot stop the devourer it will take only the blood to speak for you are you hearing me please in the series that are coming i will teach you about the mystery of the spirit the water and the blood because the bible says there are three that bear witness in heaven the father the word and the spirit he said these three are in agreement he said but in the earth realm there are three the three entities that can open any door in this realm the spirit the water that's the word of god and what the blood he said and these three agree anything they agree on that door must open hallelujah these are very deep spiritual principles there are many of you you have prayed and fasted about some things it didn't change that's to tell you that your spiritual approach may be wrong hallelujah let's continue tithing the heavens will open over you everybody say in the name of jesus i receive grace to be faithful i need my heavens open see when your heavens are open you will know you will know your heavens are open one time i was praying i think around chapel and the lord showed me a vision i looked up and i saw like two ancient gates they were closing and opening closing and opening i said lord what is the meaning of this and the lord told me this is the heavens opening and closing over people and this is the faithfulness of tithing please take this serious tithing does not bring money tithing opens the heavens when the heavens are open anything done under that open heavens will succeed you see why some of you have been giving you have been giving to the poor you have been giving to the needy things are not working because the heavens are closed the devourer just needs to look at your heavens and know whether he's permitted to come to your life or not. This is a powerful key that many, many ministries, there are many ministries who love God, great preachers, but they are living under closed heavens. So they don't know why members don't come. Have you seen people complain like that? Members come and go. Members do this and that. I will train people and then they will leave. Let me tell you something. Check it. If you are not careful, the heavens are open. The heavens are closed, sorry. When your heavens are open, you will see extraordinary things that you know only God can do. You can't negotiate this principle. God is not a politician. There's no back door. No shortcut. Hallelujah. 
So have you been faithful in tithing? If you have not been faithful in tithing, stop saying God is responsible for what you are in. You have permitted the devourer. There are many of us who are in business. You don't tithe. Many of us, God blesses us. You don't tithe. See, if you do it out of force, it's not by faith. And whatever is not of faith is sin. You just wasted your time. It is a product of a revelation. How can I eat the tithe of God? Here is my heart, my mind. Make up your mind. Lord, no touching your tithe. If you are faithful, you will live in Eden. When you touch the tithe, you are sent out of Eden. When they sent man out of Eden, toiling and all kinds of things. There are many of you truly it's not like god is not blessing you but it does not work the bible says and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper take this tithing thing serious the number one key you need to teach people about open heavens is tithing don't think this is a gimmick by preachers if you come and pay the tithe and the preacher eats the tithe it's god that will punish him but you do your part do not allow anybody's negligence to stop you say am i sure it's not that usher that will carry my money what is your business make up your mind buy envelopes many of us are owing god you say god let me touch this five thousand please this is an emergency i must respond to it immediately and the devourer is saying go ahead please go ahead the moment you take it <laughs> you are just convinced that because you took communion or they made cross with oil on your head the devourer goes and you just fall down and stand up and say thank you jesus the devourer is waiting for you the moment you come out the oppression continues i'm telling you kingdom principles supernatural accomplishment starts with an open heavens he said you will see the heavens open the moment the heavens are open angelic activities begin in your life when jacob saw the heavens open what happened angels started ascending and descending and jesus told nathaniel he said you are you are shouting because you have just seen these things he said you will see greater things what are the greater things you will see the heavens open and the angels every time angelic activities are scarce in your life check your heavens may be closed hallelujah number two prayer so revelation one and then prayer prayer you must pray you must pray it's one of the greatest spiritual investment now i've had preachers even on tv talk against prayer and they say pray 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 you pray you don't pray all you just need is the word 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 <laughs> listen let me tell you the honest and sincere truth the bible says we will not leave the ministry of tables i mean the ministry of we will not concentrate on serving tables we will focus on the ministry of the word and prayer hallelujah a prayerless christian is a powerless christian period whatever destroys your prayer life has killed your christian heritage it's a dangerous spiritual investment that you must make it will build your spirit you will build sensitivity the gifts of the spirit will find expression the anointing of the spirit will be at work in your life and the anointing itself is capital everybody say anointing is capital yes we only know naira and cobo and dollars and pounds to be capital anointing is big capital are you hearing me the anointing can open doors for you that nothing else will open anointing is great capital all men seek for thee that's what they told jesus why were they seeking for him because he had an anointing do you know that if you have an anointing the uncle you are trying to talk to that is neglecting you he needs something that the anointing upon your life can solve you concentrate and build that capital i have entered places today that if i was not anointed there is no way on earth at this level of life those doors would have opened impossible impossible hallelujah prayer let's look at the second cost spirit move 
over me. Spirit move over me. Intellectual cost. Everybody say intellectual cost. Say it intellectual cost. So the first cost is your spiritual cost for supernatural accomplishment. Second cost is intellectual cost. Help us, Holy Spirit. Isaiah 5, verse 13. Everybody, while you are opening, I'd like you to shout, Knowledge is power. Not, not that school. A long high dogo. Say, knowledge is power. Say it again. Knowledge is power. Hallelujah. Knowledge is truly power. If you value knowledge and you value information, you will do wonders in this earth realm. Please listen. This is where I want everybody to give us our attention because I know for many of us, the spiritual cost, we are paying it very well. But probably, we are not paying the intellectual cost. Knowledge is power. Isaiah 5 verse 13. Everyone read. One to read. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Why? Knowledge. Everybody say knowledge. Say information. What you do not know can destroy you. Ignorance is not an excuse in this realm. In the world of champions, you don't give room for ignorance. Many of us are spiritually serious, but we are mentally lazy. We are not willing to pay the price. Preachers, hear me. Emoji, wake up. Many preachers are intellectually lazy. And they wonder why they are not commanding results. Hallelujah. Sustainable success is guaranteed by quality access to information. Your access to quality information about any area of life that you are trusting God to be an ambassador whether business whether your job there are many people who may never be promoted till Jesus comes because they are praying in tongues they are paying spiritual prices but they are neglecting their intellectual price look at me see honesty is good but that's not the only thing that is required in delivering results competence is key and competence is a product of intellectual prowess are you listening to me many nigerians have dreams and visions there are many books dream big have a great vision that's wonderful but just having a dream or a vision may never bring it to pass you must re you must get the knowledge and the information it takes to push that vision from being a dream until it starts walking on two legs everybody say intellectual cost ignorance is very costly i told you very very costly he said i daniel understood by books this book of the law the bible says this book not this chase magazine not this pointless novel this book many of us do not invest in building our intellectual capacity somebody comes and say god is calling me i'm going to be a public speaker i saw it in a vision i saw myself wearing suit like pastor femi you may die and never enter that revelation if you are not ready you think we are going to bring you to come and present a paper for us when you don't you've not read any book on public speaking you don't know anybody hallelujah you're not opening up yourself to learn from people who have gone ahead of you you will never arrive there this is what will frustrate you more many christians are frustrated because they cannot understand why although they are praying although they love god they see that they are lazy intellectually Go to the house of many believers you don't find anything somebody is walking in his job he's never read any book to improve him does not understand anything about people's skills does not understand anything about leadership 
many pastors are governing churches all they know is how to pray in tongues and preach well they have no knowledge of corporate leadership they have no knowledge of corporate financing hallelujah principles of conflict resolution they do not know these things they don't care principles of church growth they don't care hallelujah praise the lord it's very important many of us do not pay the price to build ourselves intellectually you believe god is calling you to be a reality a tv show or a hostess or host or marriage and whatever and you sit down people ask you what do you know about marriage is the coming together of a man and a woman to be a husband and wife do you know listen listen see no matter how tongue talking you are are you hearing me if i want to employ people and i see that you are going your your intellectual deficiency is a disadvantage to my corporation do you think i'll employ you please answer me so why are you angry with god there are many people who are not interested listen this is important they are not interested in building themselves they don't build capacity how many books do you have in the area you believe god is sending you to see let me tell you we live in a world where the basic knowledge you get from university is not enough are you hearing what i'm saying listen there must be an added advantage the difference between the five virgins who were wise was that they took extra oil there are many people who go into business they don't know anything about the business they just hear somebody went to dubai and went and brought containers you too you stand up carry everything you have home and abroad they go and throw you away from the airport say you are going to dubai they seize all of your goods now you come back god is not faithful i'm a titan no no everybody say intellectual prowess psalms 45 verse 4 can we look at it quickly we're going to pray psalm 45 verse 4 God is doing something in this place. He said, listen, and in thy majesty, write prosperously because of what? Truth. Information. Write prosperously because of the truth that you know. Write prosperously. Bishop Oedeko said something that touched me in a very powerful way. He said, most restaurants, you can go abroad and see certain restaurants and they tell you this restaurant is 50 years old is that true this restaurant is 70 years old the owner has died yet the restaurant is still on in nigeria somebody opens a restaurant after two two years he has fought with everybody in that community till they close the restaurant and the person is a christian everybody say after me your intellect your mind must be transformed for you to accomplish supernaturally i tell you i i feel the fire of god in this place i must burn this enough buy books buy books not trainers buy books not with on buy books not mary Kay. the books will buy you mary Kay. See, he said, buy the truth. Sell it not. There are certain things I do every day before I sleep. Every day. Some of you sleep from morning till night. You are just happy. Lazing around. You come and see people reading and you say, oh boy, you said, now wow, what are you reading? You keep distracting people. There is a name for those people. They are called enemies of progress. How many of us pay attention? There are many of us visitation, hopping from house to house, hopping to people's office, gossiping and discussing things that have no bearing to your future. Great men, hear me, are men who have learned to settle down and build their minds. That you are a Christian is no guarantee for you to allow yourself to be mentally lazy. They give you a speech to prepare. You didn't prepare for it. You are not serious about it. God has brought favor. 
lack of intellectual preparation kill the favor out of your life hallelujah there are many of you oh god is calling me into decoration what do you know about decoration how many books show me the dvds you are watching about those who have who are champions in decoration and you come and just keep sleeping dirty pieces of paper for people please give me a contract i am a christian i'm your member so what so what oh i can make hair don't patronize that person is an unbeliever patronize me the person patron he said plot me all back you plot like this yet you think that the person will just say okay you are a nice christian are you contending to improve yourself i improve myself every day i'm not satisfied with where i am in every area of my life show me what you are doing to build your mind show me the investments you are making mentally and i can tell you whether you'll be part of the world changers or you'll be part of the storytellers are you listening to me very important Lay your hands on your head and say after me in the name of Jesus. I receive grace to build my mind. I will buy books. I will buy DVDs. I will build myself in the area I've been called to function. I will be the best. I will not relent until I am the best. Say I will not relent. I refuse to be a local champion. I'm a global champion. Hallelujah. Yes. Make up your mind. Refuse to be a local champion. A brother is, is, is getting married and all he has home and abroad is 200,000. So they called you and gave you 10,000 for decoration. You just did every kind of ugly thing and they say, who did this? They say, you. They say, oh, well done. You just believe that another time you say i'm carrying a proposal to abuja you carry your file and you are moving to go and disgrace yourself in abuja when you go there you will see other people who have worked upon themselves when you see their designs you just stand there as if god failed you please take seriously what i'm saying believers build yourself every day there are four things i do on before i sleep i must build myself spiritually i must build myself corporately i must build myself in leadership what are you doing what do you do with your 24 hours many of you early in the morning they saw you in samaru later on you are in high dogo later on you are around and you just come and say I'm, I'm, i had a busy day doing busy but doing nothing nothing you went to go and gossip jakes you now run to another person you did this stop it if you have been doing that great leaders are not like that if somebody comes and is disturbing you don't be afraid to tell the person sorry i'm doing some studies i'm praying some of you are embarrassed you don't want to be bad ah. create a protocol around your life let nobody just jump in and out of your life because they think they want to see you you are studying at that point illumination is coming somebody just bashes in oh boy anything for the boys politely tell the person i'm i'm in a period i'm birthing something that can take my family from where they are to mount ararat and take them to a place where they will be great do you not know samadhi he says ideas rule the world there are many of you if only you pay attention the truth is god tried for you you are very intelligent you are just not serious you can't sit down and pay the price and you know something listen the truth is if you really really want to be great god will open the way for you the reason is many of us do not want it bad enough that's why the way has not opened i don't care what it is you want if you desire it truly he said you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart there is a level of passion when i want things i get them oh yes i get them i will pay any price to get it for me pain is not an issue hallelujah 
when I travel and people who have gone ahead of me in any area of life are talking I get a biro I'm just listening to them ardently or I'm just typing on my phone I'm listening to the wisdom they are bringing while I'm listening I'm reaching out to my pocket finding any seat there to connect you see let me tell you I, I taught this already in commanding results the law of honor things do not just happen are you hearing what I'm saying things are made to happen the truth is whatever area it is you are trusting God to go to there are people who are carriers of that grace there are people who have that knowledge you want to plot you believe you want to start a saloon have you gone to somebody who has who has a saloon and tell the person see I have 2,000 naira. can I give you this 2,000 naira and be coming every day and be learning for one hour I plead with you see me I started plotting somebody this all these people this arrogance is what has kept a lot of people humility if you do not humble yourself you will never build your mind don't wait for people who have solution to come and meet you doctors don't look for sick people they establish an institution called a hospital and the sick people look for them passionately and even in the hospital there are different kinds of words according to your desperation there is a word called emergency word. When you really need help badly, they take you to that word. Life has emergency word. There are many people who you can get tired of your life that you say, no, I'm not going to any, I'm going to an emergency word. Build yourself. Build yourself. Oh, God wants to make me a pastor. And God showed me in a vision, I'm going to have 1,000 branches. My brother start getting going for knowledge before you die early the trouble of managing yourself is even killing you and you want to manage 1000 branches full of members see this is why god does not answer the prayer of a lot of people they they want crowd they do not know the complexities that come with managing people every day there is a case somewhere somewhere this is what was wearing moses away and his father Jethro in law, um, uh, his father in law Jethro began to give him a key on how to he would have died for nothing. There are many men of God who are dying because they are doing everything, everything because they do not understand the principle. Everybody say, I receive grace to build my mind. Jordan bookstore is there, you can start. Let me see how many of you believe that you are going to do business. Let me see your hands, business people whether potentially or presently what are you doing in that line of business keep your hands lifted so that i will what are you doing are you doing anything or you are just coveting other people who have gone ahead and say hey god oh, this is lucky oh. please drop your hands take it seriously you want to do business behave like a businessman don't behave like a thief How many of you believe that God has called you into one form of leadership or the other? Whether corporately, almost everybody should be lifting their hands. You are either a father or a mother at least. What are you doing to build? No, I'm serious. What are you doing to build it? I build myself every day. I interact with the brightest of the brightest of the brightest. I love everybody but I will not learn from everybody. I want to shorten my journey as much as possible so i'm not ready for anybody to bring his mediocrity and make and punish me then after many years go for the best say go for the best tell your neighbor go for the best don't let loyalty and sympathy make you just camp around people you know your brother is good but the truth is he cannot sing very well you want to be a musician collect his own tape so that he won't feel angry but go and look for people who have earned the right to command authority in that field loyalty has stopped a lot of people from moving forward a man of god who is not a businessman doesn't know anything about business is organizing a business expose and preaching all kinds of messages that don't make sense he's a good man of god but a bad businessman and a lot of people carry all of those principles and life flogs them back love your pastor honor your pastor if he's not a businessman look for a businessman and listen to him
Hallelujah. Finally, the third cost is the physical cost. If you're angry with me, that's a sign that God is working on you seriously. You know I won't stop. No way. Physical cost, the third one. It takes diligence and work. Not necessarily hard work, but work to bring forth extraordinary accomplishments. Look at me. Everybody say laziness. Say one more time, laziness. For the last time, laziness is not my portion. In Jesus' name. If you want to accomplish things supernaturally, extraordinary accomplishments, three things must suffer momentarily in your life. Number one, your time. Number two, your energy. Number three, your resources. The proof of love, the clearest proof of love is the investment of time. You must have time for anything you love or you consider serious enough. How much time are you putting on ground? How much energy? Energy. Everybody say energy. See, great people in life are workaholics. Are you hearing me? They work their life out until they enter that realm of greatness. Praise God. I've been ministering in the last three weeks, traveling, ministering, doing a lot of things. But it does not stop me from doing the things I have to do. Hallelujah. From this place, I have another trip again. Traveling up and down. Yet, you must give your energy. Everybody say energy. Some of you like sleep. Once it's 9.30, you're already nodding. Even if you are talking with somebody, you just do like this. And the next thing you are sleeping. No. No. If you love sleep, you will kill your, your future. your legs inside cold water and said my eyes you can sleep if you want to sleep but my life must move forward if you make that determination no devil in existence will stop you physical efforts there are some of us who are lazy you hate pain you hate anything discomforting you you hate embarrassment right now as i'm talking you're feeling embarrassed why are you embarrassing us every great man in life is one who has been able to kill embarrassment where you open up your heart and say flog me just lash it let it come to build me many of us have lived in a place where everybody has lied to us either because you are a pretty lady or you are a handsome guy everything you do is right i tell you the truth if what you are doing is wrong i will tell you change Proverbs 14 verse 23. We'll look at a few scriptures and we'll pray. Your destiny must move forward in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 14 verse 23. Let's read together. One to read. In all what? In all labor there is profit. But the talk of the lips. Cheap talk. There are many people that talk 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 but the bible says in all labor put your talk to work in all labor there is profit but the talk of the leaves tended to what penury back your talk with tremendous efforts and tell yourself no matter what it will cost me say in the name of jesus no matter what it will cost me I am prepared to pay the price to be the best in my field in the area God has called me I will be outstanding I will pay the price the price of time the price of energy the price of my resources some of you are on scholarship students a few of you God is blessing you 50,000 or 75,000 or your five or ten thousand is coming 
every time you get it you are always running to the restaurant every time you get it boys it don't land you can't be great that way you can't be great that way so you create a momentary feeling of being successful why don't you pay the price and create the real one stop pretending like you are there when you are not there if your capacity has not reached for indomie take gary and use them I, I, are you following me now if your capacity has not reached for baked beans get the normal one shake off all those things from it and cook it giving thanks knowing that it will change there are too many people living fake lives fake lives you create an impression you do not have the resources to defend somebody comes you see my watch now you say i must buy this kind of watch you go and pack your whole finances and frustrate yourself and you are suffering alone and god will say so it when you buy it and that's frustration for you see let me tell you say after me there is time for everything say it be careful what you covet about people and don't put yourself under pressure you don't need to prove a point to anybody if you have only one trouser that has torn sew it honorably and wear it let the people laugh very well so that when you become great they won't they won't say it's magic they saw you some of you will charter a car from samaru to sabo you say i'm, I'm in a hurry hurry for what 250 naira that you can buy a book you have not gotten to that level be patient the jeep will come nobody is arguing it but it won't come now pay the price sister you will buy the human hair for now use what is available use what is available don't carry ten thousand and spend it and you're just moving around fake lives use that that resource to build yourself say amen. amen if your own has not reached for shagalinku go to zinc house go to come market go anywhere be honorable about it there was a time it was zinc house we used to go to that was that was our level and let me tell you in all sincerity even at that level we were better than a lot of people by that means it's just that we decided to push our lives down because we knew there was there were higher jobs. There are many of you. If you get one million today, today you will buy a car of seven hundred thousand, a phone of one hundred and fifty thousand, and a suit of hundred thousand. That's all. And you just come and then give a testimony. Say the heavens open, and I'm here. My car is there. My suit is here. From that day, you start suffering. Nothing else about your life. Stop pretending it. You will get there one day. For now, invest in yourself. waste your time you think people are looking at you let me tell you they are not looking at you they have enough problems in their lives to face don't deceive yourself they are not looking at you at all they have serious issues about their own lives proverbs 10 verse 4 we're rounding up proverbs 10 verse 4 he becometh poor that deals with what a slack a lazy a slothful hand he said but the hand of the diligent will do what the hand of the diligent will bless him and with that resource he will be able to do big things for the kingdom next scripture proverbs 12 verse 24 the hand of the diligent again god see scriptures about hands about hands the hand of the diligent shall bear rule in other words shall lead the hand of the diligent will take him above he will take charge he will dominate he will break records he will set the pace but the slothful hand shall be made to pay a price shall be under tribute one last scripture proverbs 20 verse 4 
the sluggard will not plow and what is his excuse there is cold therefore shall he do what therefore shall he do what now is the time to sow many people let me tell you thank god you are hearing this now because there are people who think you are wasting your time i promise you they will pray in tongues and still beg in the days to come it's not a false prophecy it's the truth about life many of the great people in this country are the classmates of some of our parents true or false where were our parents when they were paying the price and they get angry when they see them this is what happens to poor people when they don't pay the price and they see others that go ahead see every time you accomplish supernatural things you create an effect that agitates people because of the frustration you respond to critics not by replying by producing more results are you ready to take your life from where it is to the next dimension i've shown you how these are keys your eatery can be the best god didn't lie when he spoke to you are you hearing me your business can be the best your ministry can be the best your life that book can be a bestseller you just need to find out find out from those whose books have been bestsellers you wrote your book it was great but it was not a bestseller yet find out god has told you that he's putting the word of the lord in your mouth and you will be a prophet to the nations as it is nobody knows you go and get this spiritual capital of the anointing pay the price and i tell you if if i were a prophet if that god called me into the prophetic ministry i would have done things that would shock people many people are not ready to pay the price everything is available but there is a price tag on it if you can pay it carry it the best car in the world is still on sale if you have the money today you can go and order it nobody will stop you all the packages in life according to the measure of grace and your sacrifice and ability every time i stand before koinonia i don't see see let me tell you a time will come the people you see today will be the ushers in eni just the ushers because i know there is a world dying that cannot resist the solution we are bringing impossible our job is to contend for greater grace oh my god i'm a success hallelujah i have the capital of the anointing i have the holy spirit the wisdom of god in me and i will pay that price rise up on your feet i bring you words of comfort it will not always remain like this your life will change lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues supernatural accomplishments extraordinary accomplishments like Uzziah Make sure you are praying. You are shining like the brightness of the firmament. You may start from Zaria, but I see you going far. Don't say I cannot get here. Walk by the principles. They will open you up to those gates. The nation will stand and give you an ovation. The nations will reward your sacrifice. Inspire yourself. I cannot be a failure. And David encouraged himself. Hallelujah. Very quickly, we are going to pray three prayer points. First, 
is your spiritual life how many of you know the anointing is capital i've shared it with you now the anointing can make somebody come and sow a seed in your life that your your business for for 10 years cannot give i why are you neglecting it and one river came out of eden it parted itself into dimensions you are going to pray say lord i value your presence i value your anointing that anointing i take it like a capital lift your voice and pray hallelujah the anointing my head is exalted like the horn of a unicorn and i am anointed with fresh oil power to heal the sick power to deliver the oppressed access in the spirit that will give me a seat among the great i refuse to be an ordinary preacher i'm full of the holy ghost walking in signs and wonders that will confound men i'm stepping into deep dimensions of power of grace i respect your anointing i respect your anointing oh god pray you need the capital of the anointing you need the capital of the holy ghost the greatest gift and the bible says the gift of a man the gift of the holy ghost the gift of the anointing they told jesus all men seek for thee all men seek for thee rich men seek for thee blessed people seek for you because of what you carry if you carry grace they will look for you if you carry power they will look for you if you carry unction they will look for you if you carry fire they will look for you they will invite you they will sow into your life they will bless you my spiritual life i receive your fire oh god it's not a waste it's a glorious investment that will separate you regardless of your lineage regardless of your barrier regardless of any factor there is a world dying out there they need the anointing they are willing to honor it they are willing to invest in it they are willing to reward it when you become anointed you will be above hallelujah hallelujah praise the lord during my birthday i was amazed at all the gifts that i got from people all around this nation and even from people outside of this nation many who have been blessed by the grace anointing is capital get this revelation when you pay the price if you get authentic grace there are hardly any families that invite me today that may not package something there are some of you right now you came here you left different places you package seeds some gifts in kind in cash you are waiting for the grace to sow years ago you were still alive but you did not come to me because there was no grace that means if i increase the grace a time will come i will start attracting a kind of people anointing is capital hear me he said because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness therefore god even thy god has anointed you with an oil of gladness that makes you above your fellows i hardly pay for things in my life right now i hardly pay for anything because everybody is scrounging to pay something for me that's what the anointing can do in your life stop struggling go for the anointing Go for grace. Go for fire. Go for power. And see the way to raise you. 
all other factors notwithstanding there are people who would never listen to me but they have been compelled by the power of his presence upon my life my age notwithstanding it has opened doors for me my age notwithstanding my level of exposure notwithstanding do you know that the anointing is capital it can end inferiority in your life when you have something men will come to drink of it he said gentiles will come to my life prayer point number two you're going to say lord i've been intellectually lazy i don't buy books i don't read but i repent this night and i begin to build myself i study by books lift your voice and pray lord i go for books i go for tapes i sit down with relevant materials along the area that i'm trusting lights to break forth for me koinonia pray koinonia pray he said then shall your life break forth then shall your life break forth the power of information if you know what to do greatness is yours for the taking if you know what to do and Uzziah invented engines pray my mind is blessed I am not God pray I study books I buy exercise books I study every day I sit under mentors I sit under men that carry the things I need whether in business whether in leadership there are men who have gone ahead already listen to them receive mentorship from them through books through tapes prophesy to yourself i'm an extraordinary leader i'm an extraordinary entrepreneur i'm an extraordinary business businessman i will shake this country with my ideas i will shake this country go ahead and prophesy i will do what has not been done before i will create a new ways in the financial world in the labor world in the it world in the arts world hallelujah last prayer point last prayer point look at me last prayer point you're going to pray and ask the lord you're going to say lord give me such grace that i will not be afraid of pain and embarrassment these two things if you can conquer pain and you can conquer embarrassment i salute you because you must be a world champion pain embarrassment these two things if you are still conscious of pain whether in the cold whether in the rain you will invest time you will invest energy you will invest resources lift your voice and pray let pain oh god not be an issue for your people may they know no pain may they know no pain may they be men fearless men strong men of grace men of audacity men of audacity who will pop their eyes their hands in the eyes of the enemy men of faith fearless courageous strong brother say say i can make it i can make it yes i can burn that idea those who have survived much pain great men are those who have survived what ordinary men cannot survive great men are men who have endured great men are men who have tried and didn't stop they fell didn't stop they were weak didn't stop a 
Hallelujah. I speak a message of hope. Some of you are like Samson. Hear me. For whatever reason, your hair has been cut. Some even your eyes have been plucked. And your family members are laughing at you to scorn. But I tell you something. When Samson stood near those pillars, his hair began to grow again. The Bible says, is there hope for a tree? Although it be cut short. I bring you a word of hope. If the devil hit you and he did not hit you from the root, he only wasted his time. Because God will take that as a pruning and he will shoot you above and beyond. Hallelujah. So get books. Get tapes. Get serious. You know any of your friend that is not serious don't criticize them encourage them in love for many of you who satan is using your yesterday against you right now i silence the voice of that accuser of the brethren because the bible says that judgment has been declared upon him your mistakes of yesterday cannot follow you into your tomorrow there is a brand new day you can rise again you can glow again you are still that champion nothing is missing nothing is broken the miracle is not in what you have lost the miracle is in what you have left if you have ears to hear and two legs to walk again you will fall again you will become a mighty dream everybody remain standing all of this will happen only when your spiritual life is put in check and i know that there are many of us the lord brought you here tonight some of you have never truly made a decision for jesus you've had preachers again and again and again and again one of the secrets of our lives is that we are committed to turning many into righteousness daniel 12 verse 3 it says they that be wise shall be like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars even forevermore it's an opportunity that you will become a star some of you have given your heart to the lord but honestly you have derailed from the part of the spirit and you have failed again and again and again and tonight you are hearing the word of the lord listen whether you are inside or outside there is love for you this is a place of hope are you hearing me the bible says there is hope for a tree you are that tree because the bible says you will be like a tree the lord is about to plant you tonight by rivers of living waters so that with any season you will still be fruitful i like you to leave your seat right now and come out here there are many people go ahead go ahead and take that step go ahead and take that step inside and outside don't wait for somebody else to come you are the first to come there are many people inside and outside appreciate them as they are coming lord i need you in my life lord i need keep coming don't let any devil stop you this is the beginning of a new season don't say everybody knows my face there's no time for that right now come and stand before his presence i can do nothing i can do nothing without you there's no life there's no life to so i need you in my life said come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden 
the lord is still ministering to me that there are two people who are supposed to be here as i'm talking to you the holy ghost is telling you leave your seat and come out what are you afraid of there are two people the lord is showing me two people honestly speaking the lord is showing me two people two people leave your seat and come the holy ghost is ministering there is one more person left god cannot lie impossible god cannot lie hallelujah lift your hands those of you in front be proud of it this is not a mortuary don't come as if no it's, if i give you a gift you will rejoice when you want to give people speech and price don't they come out you call them out this is the same thing god is giving you a gift hallelujah mean it from your heart don't recite it as a poem recitation does not bring new birth it's a sincere desire from your heart say after me lord jesus i have come to the end of myself and i love you with all my heart i know you are the only one who can help me and tonight i have heard your word take my destiny mold me make me a wonder i denounce sin and satan i declare old habits are gone bad habits are gone I am a new creation in Christ according to the truth of God's word I have eternal life in my spirit I'm saved I'm a child of God Holy Spirit come and live in me grant me grace to live a victorious life my generation will hear my voice from today forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus let me pray for you father Look at these ones. They are your children, your sons and daughters. They have come in response to your call. Lord, let their conversion be authentic. May they never go back to the things that they are coming out from right now. I impart upon you grace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. From today, you will be extraordinary. And you will do mighty things for the kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please look up. God bless you. Thank you for this great decision. We'd like to follow you, Pastor Jakes. We'd like to meet with you personally and to talk with you and pray with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to follow the usher. He will have your details. The gentlemen waving their hands. Just turn back and follow them. They'll have your details. And when they have your details, they'll have a personal time with you and they'll discuss further and bless you. God bless you.